time has lifted from me the burden of being young. Unhappily, the weight gets distributed elsewhere. It's been a far ride, Mr. Pence. Almost done now. Where's the glory? Who'll ever know way out here? Tell him. Mr. Candless, I'm from New York. The Register? Maybe you read it. Largest circulation in the USA. We've been doing some stories on the West. Readers gobble it up, you know. Well, now, this young fellow and I, we met up in Albuquerque. He asked me to be Boswell to his Johnson. Observe the occasion, as it were. You know, ardent young challenger versus the deadliest gunfighter in the West. I don't know who you are, but you want to be famous? Then be the man who was smart enough to stand out of my husband's way. You be the man who watched Gerd Canlis go home. Well, maybe he'll loan you his guns. Hey, how about it, Canlis? You want your little lady to stand up for you? can't hold this long. It's slip hammered. Liable to go any second. Now you pull your gun, aim it at me. When you're set, fire. My thumb's weakening. Quick now, on it. Would you let me ride along with you, Mr. Canlis? That is, if I could switch to that wagon of yours. Man with your style deserves more than just a column in a newspaper. Book, Mr. Canlis. Ah. How would you like for me to put you in a book? Name your price. Get 
entonces? Ahora, ahora. Ah, es lo más alto que puedes hacerlo. Bueno, entonces, amárralo muy bien. Vamos, vamos, vamos a ver. Thirty-seven dollars a head. I don't think Don Miguel is going to appreciate his cattle boning in the sun. <laughs> then you do not know Don Miguel, senor. In los aguacielos, tradition comes first, even above cattle. It's the way. I see. Until the boys get spruced up again, we're going to have a little more fiesta again tomorrow. Yes, sir. Yahoo! Bienvenidos, señora y señor. Oh, thank you. Is there a hotel nearby? A casa de huéspedes, over that way. I will be pleased to show you. Oh, that'd be very nice. Hello, Gil. Augusta. This is my husband, Gil Favor. I'd like to have you come by later, after we unpack. Sure, I'd like that. Ah. Don't ask. me about Gil Favor. Lay out my black shirt, Augusta. I do no such thing. There's one thing I believe in. You. I don't have to ask about Gil Favor. You make a perfect target. Black against those white walls. I wish you hadn't learned that kind of knowledge. You wear a white shirt tomorrow. Tell me what you see down there, Augusta. People. Happy people. What do I see? Whitewashed walls. Where the sun stands at noon. At one, at two. Does the steeple block it? Where are the reflections? From which window? Which water trough? How do the shadows fall? Where a heel might catch a foot slip? On three sides of the plaza, white walls. So you wear black. You create an easy target, an outline fixed in the mind of Don Miguel. A thing in black locked on his front sight. But suddenly, when the moment comes, you change positions, and now you're there, in the doorway of that church. The dark, open doorway, and the blackness of the chapel coming up behind you. Black against black. down and pace it off. I'll leave my gun belt here. No reason to alarm all those happy people. Augusta, would you tell me again about that place of yours where, where we're going? Oh. Um, eight white pillars guard the front. And, and greyhounds Papa brought from Italy scamper on the lawn. All the way, all the way down to the river, that lawn goes. And you can smell the sweet swamp land, and all the rich honey earth around. 
And inside our house, there's a double staircase so that mother and daughter can make stunning entrances together, trying to outdazzle that crystal chandelier that Papa brought from Vienna. And oh, from the kitchen, odors and, and spices so pungent, it's just gonna drive us wild. Annie's tipsy cake. My, that is something to look forward to. Don't leave me, Augusta. Don't ever leave me. Oh, well. I don't have the sense. Ya saben ustedes perfectamente lo que se tiene que hacer. Ustedes me ponen los farolillos en aquellos arcos. Uh, y tú, uh, ya. Y tú me haces el favor de colgar esto en la casa de huéspedes, en la puerta. ¿Seguro? Sí. Sí, sí pasa. The doors of the chapel are always open. Unlike the doors of heaven. In either case, all you have is to enter. They always let. They represent prayers for the safe return of Don Miguel and his tiboleros. When is that? Tomorrow. Will they be led tomorrow? During the fiesta? Not very likely. Unless you care to light one yourself. who will ride with you to take Don Miguel's cattle to the east. He blessed the drinks. San Jose is good for all troubles, like my botillas. You know, Padre Tasso, he said to me, Manuel, you wish a santo in your cantina, put him there. San Jose has seen worse and suffered more than a few poor borrachos. <laughs> I think you were one smart vaquero, no? About what? By tomorrow, there will not be room in here to raise an elbow. From wall to wall, no room. They say it is the wise man who drinks the day before, no? No, day after. Don Miguel, is he a wise man? <sighs> si, amigo, most wise, most generous, most brave. We will see him again tomorrow. He will make his pony to dance across the plaza, holding his lance up high. And behind will come the burros and the caretas, heavy with buffalo meat. Yeah. To Don Miguel. To Don Miguel. Is he as good with a gun as a lance? Si, sí, amigo. He has only to point with his gun so. And the bullet goes where he points, as if the gun were a part of his very own flesh. No, no, senor. We drink to Don Miguel. There is no charge. Tomorrow. 
Sí, señor. Hasta mañana. here to speak against it. Let it be Lope de Cruz who rides at my side through the plaza tomorrow. I was born here. I know every stone. You want to show me? Do not send to know for whom the bell tolls. It doesn't toll for us. Hmm? It's the Angelus. The Angelus is a devotion commemorating the Annunciation. Said it morning, noon, and evening. You know, Augusta, a man could never really get to know all of you. Coming down here and finding you isn't the only reason I'm here. I'm going to go to church and pray. Unless I can charm you out of this foolishness. $1,500 now, that's a lot of charming. Is that what they're paying you? Well, we don't need their blood money. We got all that and more in Baton Rouge just sitting there waiting for us. Tell me. Tell you what? There's no plantation. Fuck, good. I, th I think you've taken leave of your senses. Before, I didn't think I was going to make it back. It didn't matter then, but now. Augusta, there never was a plantation, was there? No shack in the swamps of fodder corn piled at the window for one old skinny hog. Breakfast on, on pale grits and sweet potato coffee. I was 14 when they fought a battle hard by, Union troops and our young men. I could hear the artillery. It sounded so far away, but they hit that place of ours and... And that, that dumb old hog that never could get fat. And Mama and Papa. I just... I just wanted to make you want it. I just wanted to get you back south. No more games, Augusta. We're past all that. We're really going back. That's why I wanted us to come on us with each other before tomorrow. And when it's done, and they pay me my $1,500, we have our lives ahead of us. No more games. You'll die tomorrow. go in now. Little boy. 
Would you like to earn a dollar? Si, senor. Somewhere nearby, there are Americanos who come for the cattle of Don Miguel. You know where they are? Si. There's one. Send your favor. You ask for him and tell him the lady said Don Miguel must not come to the plaza tomorrow. But why not, senora? It is his plaza. You just do what I say, you understand? Now run along here. The need of confession is desperate. I'm about to commit a mortal sin. Now, now, my child, don't say those things. No one should sin. I think I must. No, no. What is this mortal sin you're about to commit? I may have to kill a man. Oh, Father. It's more than I can endure. Cook tells me that she's got the best enchiladas in the territory. She's saving a table for us downstairs. You know I never eat before. Oh, that's right. In case you get hit in the stomach. This is no time for that. When is the time for that? You think I enjoy this? Well, you're sure giving a good imitation. Look, where's the joy in that? Oh, what's happened? I don't know. Maybe I do. Maybe I want to live after all. A man can get killed like that. You give it away a piece at a time. A piece with each man you drop, and each man takes his part of you until you forget who took what. I can stand that. What I can't stand is seeing they took you, too. Why can't I love away all the hate? Don Miguel? Don Miguel? Oh, such dedication. The middle of the night yet, bristling to start the drive. Compadre. 
There's a gunfighter waiting for you in Aguasielos. You see, Lope, it never stops. There are those who have the grass and water and those who want the grass and water. It's Gerd Canlis. Mm. At least they flatter me with the best. Still, it could be worse. I have heard that Canlis has never fired first. So we have no problem, since I have never fired first either. Uh-uh, that's been tried before, too. But Canlis has a great talent for forcing an issue. Now, I hate to mess up your fiesta, but I would recommend very highly staying out of the plaza altogether tomorrow. You stay away, and that way you'll have to ride off with his guns unfired. But where's the Pundidor in that? All right, there's not much honor in it, but there's a lot of living and quite a bit of sense, boy. I will kill him. Lope! Senor Favor is right. You and the others will ride in with the buffalo. I will go directly to the hacienda. Hide? Now wait. Lope! If you like that boy, you'd better stop him. How? feel the weather. I didn't see any reason to wake you for that. Go on, go back to sleep. Si vivis, ego te absolvo pecatis tuis, in nomine patris, et fili, Espiritu Santi. Amen. Who was he? I said, who was he? Don't I have the right to know the name? Both, to know and to remember. Lope de Cruz. Casta?
Well, the boys don't like it much, but they say you give the word and they'll come in wearing iron instead of their Sunday best. But they want it understood now. This is for you, not Canlis. Now, I told you to tell them that they do have a choice. It ain't for me and it ain't even for Canlis. It's just to try and stop this whole thing before the whole area becomes a shooting gallery. Uh, what they'd really rather do is go to the fiesta. You know, Bailey, Fandango. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry about that. Should be finished by now. I'll see. Forgive me, Senora. I uh, stayed on my knees longer than usual. One prays for many things, but uh, forgiveness is all he can truly hope for. It is the thing he needs the most forgiveness. Yes, forgiveness. I should have stopped him, I know. Shot him in the leg if it came to that. He would have healed would still possess life. I thought of the same thing. I thought sometime I'll just shoot him in the hand. He, he, he'd never forgive me, but, but he'd be alive. I never could do it. Senora, if you wish, I will call my housekeeper. Perhaps she has something you would care to try on. Oh, no, no. I, how I look is unimportant, but what I ask is... Gerd came here to kill you. But for once, things didn't go the way he planned. I know what he's going through right now. He probably thinks I left him for good. He's he probably wondering about a lot of things. But I think that just this once, I may be able to make him leave. I, I just might be able to get him to listen to me. I just ask you one thing. To let us ride out of this valley together. To let us leave. Senora, I have no desire to stop him. And what about your men? Like that man that tried to kill him? I have commanded that there be no violence unless your husband starts it. Don Miguel, you'd better make some more commands. There's certainly no peace party out there. Please, promise me. I promise, Senora. If you act at once, I do not know how long they will listen, but I will try. Thank you. I'll ride you back, Augusta. You left me. What would I do with all that plantation? What were you doing? Write me a goodbye note? Yesterday, Augusta, down by the church, I made you admit there was no plantation. Not because I wanted to embarrass you or expose you but because I want everything between us to be honest. Why shouldn't that go for me, too? There are some things I haven't talked to you about, and I wanted you to know not as an excuse for the things I've done, but because now is the time. I thought later on they'd come up here, find the note, and send it on to you. I wanted you to know the reason for this rage at the world. How it all started because some Barber Street crimp shanghaied me and kept me three years at sea. And how finally, when I got back, it became 
easier and easier to kill, then harder, and how it wore off. Partly because I, I wasn't sure anymore. Mostly because of you. I'm just sorry it didn't wear off sooner. But there's still time. I talked to Don Miguel, he said, he said we can ride out of here if we go now. You don't believe that? Oh, Gerd, I've got to. I've still got to do what I came to do. But you said it was all worn out. You said it was all done. You were writing it in that letter. You were supposed to read that, Augusta, after. What gun are you going to use on Don Miguel? A strange question. Will you answer me? I'll carry my rifle, wear my 45s. Depends on the range, how and when he's going to make his move. Well, that's good, because it would present a problem if you use the shotgun. When you make your move, where do you figure Don Miguel's going to be? In the center of the plaza, or the east, or the west? Of course, it doesn't make any difference, because it's a small plaza. Any part of it's easy range from up here. Open my trunk, will you, Gert? is a gun that killed Ben Cole in El Paso last month. You had been shaking and talking in your sleep all night. And when Cole rode into town that morning, he had a look on his face like a hound dog that's got his possum tree and just waiting for it to drop. So I went out and I... I bought that gun, and I came back to the room, and I sat behind the curtain, and I waited, and I prayed. Oh, God, let me be wrong. Please don't make me have to do it. How could I live with myself if I had to kill a man? But how could I live without Gerd? He was facing me. Not more than 50 feet away when he drew down on you. You remember? It was right after you left the hotel. You were on your way to the stable. There were three shots. Two of them sounded like one, mine and Ben's. Yours was late. Ben was already dead. Oh, I knew it. I felt his slug brush my neck even as I fired. I'm dead, I thought, but Ben fell, not me. I knew someone had bushwhacked him, because I missed him. Me? Oh, I detest myself. I see myself as a corpse at Ben Cole. Augusta, I want to go home. I want to go home now.
wants me. My wife and I are leaving. Anybody feels to the contrary, they'll have to convince me. Have them bring our wagon around, Augusta, and the trunk from upstairs. The senor will honor me. your friend. But everybody saw it. Father saw it. He attacked my husband with no warning. If he had not come to Los Aguasielos, senora, it would not have happened. He came with death. He must go with death. No! There's no place in this town, Miguel. No honor, no pride, no future. Aguacielos is more than a place. It is a way of life. It has been offended, invaded. Unless it makes an example, it will be offended again, invaded again. I will fight him for you, for all our children. If you try to stop me, forgive me. I will fight you. I am sorry, senor, but his words are my thoughts. You can kill him easily. Possibly, I will prove more difficult. We shall have to fight. Don Miguel. Bring the children here. Let my husband beg their forgiveness. Let them see him throw his guns away in front of him. Then they can see that, that peace can be bought without killing. Felipe? If he humbles himself, if he makes a public fool of himself, then I will stand aside. Let him run away like the coyote. for each other. I came here, man, and that's the way I'm going to leave. <laughs> as close or as far as you want it, whenever you want it.
going to drop my hands, take off my guns. Don't bring your children. Bring your dogs, your chickens, your cattle. All of them are better than me. Yeah! are senseless, stupid beasts. They go halfway across the continent just to be slaughtered. The trouble is, nobody ever trained them to go alone. It takes men to push a herd north. It's men and time and sometimes pain. That's where I come in. I'm one of the men. Gil Haber, trail boss. <laughs> used to it, keep some of her things in that. <laughs> Crazy. I don't see any papers on him. Here's a photograph. What happened? He tried to kill me. Well, what for? Well, how would I know? It's about time to head down the herd anyway. We'll find out who he is when he comes around. That is, if he can tell us. Jim, Joe, let's put him to bed. Hey, boss.
What have you done? We were just protecting ourselves, miss, and it took some doing that. Harry? Harry? He'll come around all right. I'm sorry I had to put him with a gun, but he didn't leave us much choice. Well, I'll answer for anything he did, any damage he caused. We took this off him. Oh, that's my husband, Mr. Whitman's son. I'm Rose Whitman. Mrs. Whitman, my name's Favor. How do you do? I live at a ranch about a mile east from here. If you can help me get Harry into the buggy, I think we'll be able to make it home without Why don't trouble. you just rest here a while first? I'll have one of the men ride over and let your husband know what's happened. My husband passed away six months ago. Oh, sorry. Well, maybe I could ride back to your ranch and bring back one of your hands. Well, Mr. Whitman and I live alone now. Well, I'd better go with you myself, then. No, there's no need for that. Mr. Whitman isn't always as violent as you just saw him. When his mind's clear, he's one of the gentlest people on Earth. He sure comes close to being one of the strongest. He was the strongest once, when he was a young man in the ring. So that's what he was doing, boxing, huh? He was a champion of England and Ireland. Sometimes when he hears something that reminds him of the day he was beaten, he loses control. I think maybe the shouting of your writers. Feeling all right? Harry? Harry, this is Mr. Favor and... Rowdy, yes. They're friends of mine, Harry. I don't think Mr. Whitman is quite himself yet. I wonder, might I take you up on that offer after all? Certainly, Mrs. Ray, you let them in and I'll be gone for a while. And you follow on after us. Right. way and not a word. Blame the silence on me, Mr. Favor, not Harry. No blame to anybody. Big was the first champion. Then came Pipes. Then Gritton. Then Brutton. Right. I and I broke Tom Hyer's jaw in the 30th round. Boston, 1846. You know, he was a pretty good man. I promised to meet again. And, uh, of course, you know, I've got to soak these knuckles a little more. He said they're not ready yet. Did a heart send it to me? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, it's his jaw. See, he needs more time for it to heal. Now, don't lie to him. I, I don't want him to feel small or baggy. Just tell him that I'm not ready either. Here's John's picture, Harry. It fell out of your pocket. If you're going back and training, you'll need your sleep. Ah, oh, there's a son to be proud of. A little small for an act of fighting, but a fine heart, a good brain. Aye. The breaking training, Harry. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Jen, for saying good night so early, but if you have the prize ring, you'll understand. Oh, we understand. Harry sleeps in the barn. He loves the smell of hay. Mrs. Whitman, I know it's none of my business, but shouldn't you have a couple of hired hands around in case anything happened? It isn't that easy to find someone you can trust nowadays. Well, our trail map says we're close to a town named Rock Point. Don't you have any friends there you could have come out? I don't get into Rock Point very often. My husband and I moved here just a month before he died. We never had a chance to make many friends. Aren't you worried about your safety? Oh, nothing will happen to me. You'll stay for supper. I have a stew and chicken. It'd sure be a relief from Wishbone Stew, but uh, you got work to do. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Well, thanks for bringing yourself to all that trouble on my account. No trouble. We'll uh, tie up your team before we leave. Thank you.
You can't beat him if you're afraid, Harry. You're afraid, Harry. Get on your feet and fight. Coward. Get up, coward. Get up, coward. I was in the barn. How did I get here? Well, you were walking in your sleep. You fell against the rain barrel. Oh. Now you go in the house and get some towels. Dry yourself up before you catch your death. Yeah. All right. You could be beaten to death at any time, couldn't you? I just went in to see if he was comfortable. Second time in an hour we've seen him like that. Comes and it goes. Nobody would believe it unless they'd seen him in one of his spells. Mrs. Whitman, what are you going to do about this? I don't know. My husband used to say if he got any worse, she'd commit him to a territorial asylum, but you know, it's strange. There's been a federal judge holding court here in town for the last week. I felt like taking Harry to him and having the judge commit him, but I backed away from it. Judge Gornet? No, he'll be there until tomorrow afternoon. Well, it isn't a very easy decision to make. Well, it better become easy to decide, and real quick, too. Well, everybody in town likes Harry. I wouldn't have any witnesses. You've got two witnesses right here. The herd could get along without us for a day anyway. Yeah, and there's that uh, stewing chicken that you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, Roddy and I could sleep at the barn, go into town with you first thing in the morning. Well, uh... It'll be better. It'll be better for him. You know, I'd almost forgotten that luxury. What luxury, Mrs. Whitman? Having a man make up my mind for me again. Nice behaved Tom. Folks, you make a carnival out of it, we? Carnival air. A few months ago, the town elected a new marshal. He's a fire at Brimstone man. It's his intention to make this town spotless. He do seem to be a man of his word. Well, look who's come to town. Hey, now. The only real woman in Rock Point. That's what them who knew her up in Abilene say. We asked a few buttes like that down to the keg house. Before your brother started scrubbing his town. You shut up about him. Well, I'll shut up. If it wasn't for Marshall Thompson, we'd have us a town. Except a graveyard. I thought the Marshall had run her out of town. Not that one. She's too brazen to run. Just so you know, I worked in the Crystal Palace Saloon in Abilene. I warned my husband how people would feel. I'm sorry, Harry. We don't need these outsiders to help us, Rose. Let me stay. Everything will be all right. You'll see. The judge had a reputation for being a very smart man, Harry. We'll let him decide. I used to 
to see a lot more of you and Aveline Rose. Get your hands off me. Since when you been so fussy? All right. Break it up, break it up. You're under arrest, mister. For what? For starting a rough house. A what? It'll be a fine. Five dollars. It's worth it. Give that to the clerk. See that you get a receipt. Oh, Rose, these two saddle tramps working for you? We're pushing a herd north on the Sedalia Mazora trade, mister. I haven't heard anything about a herd. Maybe you ain't been listening. Yes, he listens. Anything anybody says against me, he listens. Better not crowd her, Lou. She's one of our kind. Any of you people ever see these two before? I never seen them, Lou. Maybe good at dealing cards or spinning roulette wheels? He's got it in his mind I'm gonna open a saloon. Any man befriends me, he figures gotta be a card dealer or a stick man I'm bringing in. Greg, how about it? You seen these two before? In Silver City, I saw a man that looked like this one. Uh, I'm not sure. They smell like cowpokes. But you only have to walk through a car yard to smell like that. Until you find somebody sure, we got business here and you're holding us up. Uh, just a minute. I'll take the guns. No, you won't. You're violating the law. No one of firearms within the limits of Rock Point. Give me the guns. You'll do a lot better, mister, if you ask nice. Do what the man says, Roddy. Hear ye, hear ye. The First District Court of the United States is now in session. Judge James Cuff presiding. All right, court's open. First case. Your Honor. Yes? We'd appreciate it if you'd put the Witten case at the top of your list. Well, what's your reason for this request? Mr. Yates and I are witnesses for Miss Whitman, but we're also pushing to her north, and we're kind of pressed for time. Well, all right. If there are no objections, we'll take the Whitman case. Well, ma'am, what's your complaint? Well, Your Honor, this is pretty difficult for Mrs. Whitman. Maybe I could talk for her? Maybe you can. That is, if it's all right with her. Is it, ma'am? All right, go ahead and speak. Mrs. Whitman is here about her father-in-law, Harry Whitman. Yeah, well, get on with it. She wants the court to make out papers to put him in the territorial asylum. She wants what? Now, Marshal, I must remind you that this is a court of law. You get your chance to talk at the proper time. I'd better. What's your reason for this request, ma'am? Well, for the last few months, especially since my husband died, Mr. Whitman has been getting continually worse. He's growing dangerous. I think it would be better for him to be put away somewhere where he can be taken care of. What's the matter, Rose? You getting tired of sitting up with the old man? Now, I saw the man that said that. I want you to shut your mouth, mister, and keep it shut. I want to remind you again that this is a court of law. And dignity is going to be maintained as long as I'm in charge. What do you mean by danger, ma'am? Well, he came mighty close to killing me, Judge. What kind of a filthy railroading trick is this? I've seen a lot of miserable human beings in my life, but these three eat them all. I know this won't judge. The whole town knows her. Sure, she wants to put the old man away. She's no nursemaid. Well, why don't you listen to the witnesses? What witnesses? A couple of saddle traps you picked up off the trail to do you a favor? You sit down. Sit down. Quiet. Old man. Do you know why you're here, old man? Well, it looks like my daughter-in-law has been listening to some outsiders who think I ought to be put away, sir. Uh, what is your name? My name's Harry Whitman. How old are you, Harry? I'm 62. 
Do you know what day of the week you was born on? I was born on Monday, December the 10th, sir. Now, Harry, I'm going to ask you a very strange question. Do you know the difference between heat lightning and fork lightning? I, I don't know what makes the difference, but I know how the difference looks. Heat lightning lights all the skies, but fork lightning makes jagged streaks like that. Mm -hmm. Harry, what town are you in? In Rock Point, sir. Do you think you know the difference between right and wrong? Yes, sir. Uh, Harry, suppose you were a judge, and two men were brought up in front of you, both of them claiming the same pig. What would be the first thing you'd do? Well, I'd find out which one was the liar. <laughs> suppose both of these men had a reputation for honesty, for telling the truth. Ah, uh, then I'd kill the pig. Why, Harry? Well, because I'd sit them down both together to make friends over a nice pork dinner. <laughs> 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 Quiet! <laughs> Quiet! Order! Why, this man is just as sane as anybody in this place. Petition denied. <laughs> Judge, you're making a mistake. There are a great many bare knuckle fighters back east in this man's condition. Now they don't put them away there. And I don't intend to put him away here. I don't know about that, but I do know they saw him try to kill Miss Whitten. Look, Judge, it's for his own good as well as for hers. I can find no evidence on which to commit Harry Whitman to an institution. Case dismissed. Please, please, it's best for him. He doesn't want to kill anybody. Nobody here knows what he's like when he's not in his right mind. It's best for him. Anybody here or see Harry try to kill? No. 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 She's trying to send him away. Just do as I say. Harry? I don't want to talk to you. Leave me alone. Let's have our guns, Marshal. Leaving us already, cowherds? A while, Marshal. A while? You're leaving for good. Tell me, what is it makes you folks in this town so friendly? Long, hard hours of practice? You called it. Practice and experience. It's taken us a long time to scrub up this town, and we don't aim to have it all dirtied up by a couple of two-bit saddle tramps from off the Sedalia Trail. Tell you something, Marshal. You're seeing the way you treat your neighbors in this town, I know one thing. Don't worry about dirtying up your town. Couldn't get any filter it is. We want to tell you how sorry we are about how it turned out. If there's anything we can do. Mrs. Whitman, it's I... best to leave her alone, I guess. Don't worry about me. Tears in a woman aren't always what you think. Scum like that isn't worth crying over. I'm used to that kind. There's no reason why you should be. You know Abilene, Mr. Favor? Some. You ever been to the Crystal Palace? Yes, sir. John came in there one night to play Pharaoh. I sat down next to him, and he said I brought him luck. He'd just bought his ranch, and he was on his way to pick up his father. He asked me to marry him. And I wasn't afraid.
Brooklyn Rock. I don't know Harry the way I do. I saw his face after the judge handed down his decision. I know, I saw him. It wasn't very pretty. His mind was clear as a bell. Well, you, you can't just go back to the house and wait for him. Well, I can't run. I won't run. The only thing my husband asked was that I take care of his father until he dies. And I promised. I mean to take care of him, Mr. Faber, until he dies. Or until you do? I'll tell you exactly what'll happen. Harry will mope around in the hills for a few days, he'll come back, and everything will be just as it was. I sure hope you're right, Mrs. Whitman. You, you both have been very kind, and, and I'm very thankful. But if you're seen with me again, it'll just make things worse. Goodbye. Goodbye. You believe what she said about the old man coming back acting natural? What's more important, she doesn't believe it either. But she asked us out of it. She must have good reason. We could use some wheels. Our wagons are all crippled. Hey there! You a claim, Rovers? Right. The Mark claims you're here to start a saloon with Rose Whitman. The Marshal's a liar. The Marshal's my brother. Well, then, you can liar in the family. <laughs> no, not Brother Luke. He's too upright for lies. Nobody to stand in his way? The old cemetery full of people stood in the marshal's way. That's a good wheel. We got a dozen of them. We could use three if you could lend us a wagon to hold them. Seven dollars a piece. It's good enough. Twenty-one. There's nobody in this town. You side with a woman who needs help? On his message, you side with her, the marshal just figures you signed against him. Well, now, you think the marshal could stand it if uh, you rolled a wheel alongside of us? Wagner's just outside. All right, let's have it. Keep milling this thing around your mind like a cat worrying a rat. You all right if we take the wheels back to camp before we go back to town? Yeah. What's the matter, Mrs. Whitman? Nothing. Well, you don't look like it's nothing. And your voice don't sound right, neither. I'm worried about Harry. He's up in the hills. I'm afraid something might happen to him. Oh, yeah. Well, what you need is a man on this place. I mean, someone else in here. I know. Well, you know, I... I just never rest if I didn't try to apologize the way... My brother and the rest of them clods acted toward you in court this morning. <laughs> you know, Brother Louie, he, he just don't understand human beings. I think 
a lot of people are getting sick, tired of his ways. But I, uh, I didn't come here just to apologize for brother. I came to help. Help? Yeah. You haven't got enough money to take care of yourself and that father of yours forever. I want to help you get up so you can. How? You want to get back east, don't you? You go don't you? me. You want to get back east and dress like a lady and spend money like you want something? Isn't that it, huh? Anything wrong with that? No. No. The only thing wrong is you can't do it. Have the millstone around your neck. And that old man is a millstone, isn't he? You just can't shake him loose. What are you getting at? How much you figure this house and the barn, the livestock, and acreage worth? Right smart idea. Too bad that testimony didn't work. Harry came out looking like a sensible, harmless old man. He's not. He isn't. Not all the time. I've never seen anyone who's not. He'd be made to act crazy. He can. Yes. All right, now listen. Suppose you would tell me how to get him all riled. And suppose I got to act like that right smack in the center of town. In front of a whole flock of witnesses. In front of my brother. Now, if the town told the judge that they saw Harry acting like that, the judge would have to send him away. A lot high living on $4,000. Dave? That's fine, Rose. Fine. You got us a bargain? Yes. You'll find him up in the hills above the North Road. He always goes up there to brood like a child or a dumb animal. But you haven't told me, Rose, what I do. How do I get him piled up? All those years in the ring. He was in too long. Whenever he remembers that last time when they had to carry him out and took him two days to regain his senses, Wait a minute, Rose. I don't want to take advantage of you. I want this thing straight and above board. You got a pencil paper? Now, all you have to do is to write down that when and if you make a sale of this property after it's yours, I'm to get half. See, I'm like you, Rose. I want to get away from the stinking town, too. And with $4,000, I can stay away for a long time. Or we could stay away for a long time. Why don't you tell me, Harry? What are you doing out here? Well, where else did I go? Uh, they give you a hard time in town. Yeah. They don't understand. Nobody understands. 
I just want to fight again, even if it kills me. But the doctor say no. Yeah, sure, I know. Nah, uh, don't you worry about it anymore. Hines did it. He knocked me out in that pretty town in Liverpool. Huh. You see, I broke his jaw in Boston. Then I gave him another fight in Liverpool. He beat me so hard that I had to go to hospital. Some of the people said that I fell down on purpose. No. Yeah. I heard some said I was a coward. People got no right to say that to you. I just want to fight again. I'll tell you what. I'll set you a fight. Then you can show them all. Huh, Harry? Dave. You're my friend, Dave. Show them. You said we're gonna show them. I know, I know, but I want to set it up. See, we gotta do this thing right, Harry boy, so everyone will know you're still champion. Now, come on. Ah, look at that. They got the ring and the dressing room locked up. That's my boy. Now you, you go on in there and lock down, Harry. You get yourself some rest while well, I arrange things. All right, good to me, Dave. Sometimes it's anybody who understood me. But my son understood me. He wouldn't allow anybody to call me a coward while he was alive. Everything's gonna be all right, Harry boy. You just rest up. Now I'm gonna close the door so no one will bother you. What are you doing? This is not a dressing room. This is your brother's jail. You're absolutely right, Harry. This is a jail. Well, why'd you lock the door? This is where you belong. Jail! What do you mean? What are you doing, Dave? This is what they do to quitters, Harry. Cowards! They lock them up! Oh, Dave, don't fool me. You know I'm all right. Sometimes I get mixed up a bit. And I've been hit so many times that sometimes I feel myself in, in the ring. I can see the lights go on and they go off again. Oh, sometimes I get mixed up so that I just don't know where I am. But I'm all right, Dave. Let me out. You ain't ever gonna get out, Harry. Not till you prove you can fight. Let me out! Let me out of here! Let me out of here! Let me out of here! Harry! Let me out of Look here. Us over here! Look Let's here! Look! The pictures everywhere! And all the newspapers! Let Harry Whitman! King of Flopbacks! Oh, let me out of here! Come on! I'm the champion of England and Ireland. Everybody knows me. I'm Harry Whitman. Feet was the first champion. Then came Pips. Then Grip. Then, then, then Broughton. And I broke Tom Hyatt's jaw in the 30th round. That was a fight. That was a fight when I broke his jaw. Let me out here. Wait. Harry. Crowd's Come on, Harry. Come on. Come on, Harry. Come on, Harry. Come on, Harry. Come on, Harry. Come on, champ. Hire's waiting to beat you a pup. I think I'll go home. You can't go home. Your son's gone. Don't you remember? He can't help you now. Leave me alone. Give me the picture. Come on, get up and fight, you miserable old fall down. Give me that picture. What kind of a champion were you? You're afraid to get higher, ain't you? Ain't you? You ain't scared. Come on, let's see how you fight or fall down. Give me that picture.
you do. Dave Johnson. What is it? Sorry, Mark. He's dead. Dave. Dave. Come away from him, Lou. Two of you. Carry him inside. You had to come back, didn't you, Saddle Trap? You couldn't leave the thing alone. It took two of you to do this all wrong, Marshal. He was already dead when we came here. He knows that. Well, speak up, you drunken jabber. Look, Marshal, we're leaving the same way we came in. Somebody tries to stop us, somebody gets hurt. You two are gonna beg to die. I had plans for Diddy. This was gonna be a decent town for him to grow up in. No more temptation. There's a tree down at the end of the street. Come on. Wait, wait. Look, you can't do this. Now, these men couldn't have killed Dave. Who else could have killed him? I loaned them my wagon this afternoon. I seen them ride out of town. They came back, didn't they? Well, that doesn't mean that... Lou, you cleaned up this town. Now, you can't do this. Better go on home, Mel. You're in my way. Maybe it's just as well I am in your way. Lou, it's been a long time since anybody tried to talk sense to you around here. You're putting me, Mel. It was Dave they killed. Who said? Tanner, he, he just said that Dave was dead. Tanner saw them. He didn't say he saw it. Well, don't just stand there. Tell him the truth. They couldn't have done it. I stumbled over Dave on on my way home. He was dead then. I ran to the barn. I saw these fellows pull up. And they didn't do it. Who did? I seen, I seen Harry Whitman run off as I come up. Harry. Harry Whitman. That's right. Harry Whitman. Anybody know where the old man might be? Only has one place to go. Anybody that follows me tonight is a deputy. Right now. Thompson, you already made one bad mistake. Don't make another. You men, don't let him lead you into this. Thanks to both of you for what you did. The old man went back to the farm. He's going after Rose. Better get there before they do. For the old man. You're putting the terminal in somebody. Is that it, Thompson? Doesn't matter much who. Me, Harry Whitman, anybody. Harry killed Dave. A man out of his sense killed Dave. 
He's no more responsible for what he did than a, a gun would be. It takes something to trigger it, just as it took something to turn Harry Whitman loose. Every one of you men in that courtroom, too deaf to listen to Rose Whitman, had a hand in Dave's death. You made Harry Whitman your responsibility, and then you went home and you forgot about it. You're the ones responsible for Dave Thompson's death. All right, you've been listening to this saddle tramp spouting off. Now listen to me. I'll tell you what killed Davey. Filth and sin. You're letting a madman, a dance hall woman, and a couple of cowherds butt into our way of life. I took your dirty little town and scrubbed it till its face shone, and I can do it again. It has to be done again. Come on. Oh, come on. You're gonna let these two cowards run your town? We came here to do justice. We ain't gonna help you, Lou. Time somebody stood up to you. You ain't a good for us anymore. Maybe you were once, but you're not anymore. Lou, we're not forgetting what you did for us. Sure, you cleaned up town. You, you tamed it when it was wild. You made it a better place to live in. But you didn't stop at that. You had to keep right on ruling with iron hand till we were so scared. We, we've been living our lives just the way you wanted us to, doing everything you wanted us to do. Why do you think we came here with you tonight? To, to help you because of your brother? No. We're here because none of us had the guts to stand up to you. We were too afraid to speak up when you wanted us to lynch Harry here. Thank you, mister, for standing up to him for us. Come on, Lou. Let's go home. Oh, Marshal Thompson, you're not going without Harry, are you? Not after what he did to your brother. No. Mel's right. I was going to lynch a man. I deserve this. Not anymore. We'll take care of with us, Miss Whitman. We'll take him to the doctor. The doctor? What'll he do? Give him a pill, rest him up, and send him back to me? I don't want him back here. I'm scared stiff of him. There's no call for you to talk like that, Rose. I'm not mad. Sometimes my brain is a little hazy, and my head aches. Sometimes the taunt of people makes me hear the howls from the crowd. I feel the bare knuckles against my face and the back of my head. And I gotta fight back, Rose. I'm not mad. You know that. I'm all right. Point is, Miss Whitman, maybe he won't have those spells anymore. The doctor treats him and rests him up. Well, none of us wants to see Harry sent away. You think those are just spells? I'll show you. Harry, do you know what they're all saying? They're all saying you're a coward. They're saying you're lying down because you're afraid. You're afraid of hire. They're all laughing, Harry, because they think you're a coward. It was you all along who wanted me put away. It was you that taunted me. You and Dave. I think you sent Dave to taunt me. Well, if it means that much to you, I'll go. I'll willingly go, Rose. You want to say goodbye to me? Gentlemen, take me to the place you wanted me to go. I won't hurt you. I won't hurt anybody anymore.
one that hurt her the most. At least I can just stay with her for a while. Honey? You don't cook like you sing. <laughs> it's just more coffee, boss. I know, thanks, Jim. Oh. Give me that plate. I'll get you some more. No. What's the matter with you, Jim? Let me go check the night guard for you. I've already done that, Quint. Oh, well, I just thought. Here, light. My arm ain't broke yet. Yeah. All Sorry. right. What is it? What's what? What are you all staring at me for? Who's staring? Well, I just want a couple of days off, that's all. Oh? Right here, now? Sun up. It's no bother. What was you planning to do? Make camp here and rest up a spell? No, I... Well, it appears to me it doesn't matter what I do as long as you spare me the time. Is that all you're going to tell us? Do I get the time? Say, uh, Pete, uh, where's the nearest town around here? Uh, Hondo Seco. Good-looking girls there? Yeah, I was through there one time. It's pretty good. Uh, I guess they haven't changed much. Oh, you can't tell about a thing like that. Man wants to check up. Can't much blame him. That's right. Boss, I'm going to ask you once more, do I get the time or not? Well... Oh, hey, Seuss, when do we have to pick up that new remuda? Tomorrow, senor boss. How bad do we need them horses? How good is a drove on foot? See, it's pretty bad, Jim. I'm afraid I couldn't rightly spare you. We've got to pick up that remuda near Hondo Seco. I'll tell you this, Mr. Faber. I don't want to quit the drive, but I sure will if I have to. Say, your business must be pretty serious. If it wasn't, the one asked. Hey, Jim. Get easy. Look, suppose you uh, go along with a horse party, be a wrangler for a day or two. That ought to give you enough time to take care of your business, huh? Well, I'd stop over in Hano Seco, maybe overnight, huh? Well, I don't think you're gonna have to twist any of the other wranglers' arms to talk them into that. No, I don't know. I... No, that's the way it's got to be. How many men are you gonna need, Jesus? Three would be enough, senor. I say, uh, as, well, as Quince has some business there, uh... He's got to take care of those young lovelies. Hey, yeah, but I better go along because uh, I've been there before. I could tell if the girls are deteriorating in here. All right, Jesus, there's your party. You'll leave in the morning. We'll wait for you at the river. Oh, and Jim, whatever your business is, good luck. Thank you. Say, Jim, uh, maybe she's got some friends, huh? Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. When we get to Hondo Seco, you go your way and I'll go mine. You understand that? Well, now, you ain't being too sociable about the whole thing. I don't aim to be. This is no concern of yours. None of you. Yeah, I think he means it. Yeah.
Honda Seca is sure a lively town. I apologize, Jim. What for? You sure as heck didn't come in here for pleasure. Never mind what I came in here for. Oh, take it easy, Jim. Nobody's jumping on you. Hey, Seuss, when do you figure on going after them horses? Well, it is too far for today. We will sleep here tonight and leave tomorrow morning. Good. I'll be here. Hey, Jim. Look, we don't want to butt into your private business, but we're friends of yours. We're supposed to be working on this thing together. What happens if you can't make it by tomorrow? Then I'll catch up with you. Let me worry about it. Well, I wouldn't want to take that privilege away from you. Thanks. Boy, I don't understand him. He told you to let him worry about it. Hey, there's a saloon over there. We could all use a drink. You got no one to gamble with? You fellas are new in town, ain't you? Yeah, we just rode in. What do you have? I'd like some whiskey. What do you have? Some tequila? Uh, whiskey. Pop I'd like on. to watch her. <laughs> no, whiskey out. Yeah. Leave the jar. We'll probably want a second one. <laughs> oh, no. You're not getting drunk in here. Are you judging how much uh, whiskey we can drink or something? You better listen to Casey, mister. This wouldn't be a good town for you to get to, into trouble. I never get into tr uh, trouble much. Casey, you know who they rode into town with? No. Jim Quince. Hey, what do you do that for? You're not drinking my liquor. Do you own this place? No. Oh, wh who does? I want to talk to him. He wants to talk to the owner. Yeah, it's too bad Brad Lyons ain't in town. I'm sure he'd like to discuss the whole thing. Get out. I could give you an argument on that, mister. Sure you could. But when the owner ain't here, I'm in charge. I've got a right to order you out of here. And I've also got a legal right to use this gun if I have to. Legal right? For a bartender, you're sure sounding like a lawyer. Well, let's just say it's a message you can pass on to Quince or his brother. Now, get out! Come on, Roddy. We don't need any rot gut. <laughs> Geraniums, small, delicate things. They'll grow in Texas, but I always feel they don't really belong here. Oh, Matt, you ain't changed much in six years. Has it been that long? Yeah. We should see more of each other. Well, uh, drovers and judges don't travel the same road much, you know. I suppose that's true. Sit down. At any rate, you're here now. Be able to stay for a few days, won't you? Oh, well, I'd like to, but uh, I've got to get back to the drive tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, tell me, Matt, how's, uh, how's Joanna? I'm not very pleased with my daughter. She could always twist you around a little finger, couldn't she? Well, she's my favorite niece, you know, and come to think of it, the only one I've got. I'd be happier if... Judge Quince? Dinner is nearly ready. My brother's eating with us. Oh, thank you. Will you show him where to wash up, Hattie? Yes, Judge. Joanna's awful anxious to see you. Oh, Joanna, oh, girl. I'm so glad to see you. I was rough getting away from the drive, but once I got your letter, I had no choice. You're a darling. I want to talk to you. Come on.
How long can you stay? Well, tomorrow morning. Well, I have to go out with the other drovers and pick up some more horses. Then it'll have to be tonight. What will? No, I know your letter said you needed help real bad, but help for what? To get away from, from this house, from my father. Well, somebody would think you were a prisoner. You're talking about your own father, Joanne. You wouldn't know him, Uncle Jim. He's changed. He's changed so much. When I was a little girl, he used to be so gentle and wonderful. But after Mother died, he was different. Strange and demanding. I love him, but I can't live only for him and his way doing what he wants me to do. Joanna? Yes, Father? Dinner in five minutes. I'll be there. Now, look. I'm in love, Uncle Jim. His name is Brad Lyons. That's fine. I'd like to meet him. There's a warrant out for his arrest. The charge is murder. Brad owns the saloon next door. He's a gambler. So Brad and I were running away to be married. We rode out at night. Father sent some men after us. They caught up with us a few miles outside of town, ordered us to stop. Brad refused. There was gunplay. Brad had to fire back in self-defense. But one of the men was killed. Oh, well, I've been around long enough to know the law ain't always right. But Joanne... There aren't any buts, Uncle Jim. They had no legal right to chase after us. We weren't breaking any laws. If it was self-defense, why did he run for it then? They said it was murder. Besides, why do you think they call my father the hanging judge? It wouldn't have made any difference if it was self-defense or not. Father would have pronounced sentence. The only sentence he ever passes, death by hanging. Look, <clears throat> Kitten, I... It's hard for me to swallow a man being a, a gambler and a saloon keeper that easy. Drovers don't have very good reputations either. That's different. Is it? You know what people think of drovers, don't you? Kitten, it, it depends on the man. That's what I mean. You're a drover, Uncle Jim. Brad's a gambler. You're the two people I love most in the world. I want you to help me get to it. Well, what this really comes down to, then, is... Uh... Me believing in your judgment, ain't it? Where's your young man now? Waiting for me. In Carlisle, just across the New Mexico border. He's got a house there, he wrote me. A small house, but a pretty one. There are rose bushes in the front yard. up, Mr. Lyons. The day's journey is over. Time for the passengers to stretch their legs. I wasn't sleeping. Uh, tomorrow we'll be in Honda Seiko. Five minutes after that, you'll be up in front of Judge Quince. And I figure it'll take him about 30 seconds to sentence you to hang by the neck until you're dead. And a half hour after that, you'll hang by the neck until you're dead. Shut up! Me, I only tried to steal a few cattle. Sentence for that's one to ten years. Most judges, one year. Some five. But Judge Quince, it'll be ten years. And that's just for trying to steal a few head of cattle. You tried to steal the judge's daughter. Time to eat. All right, go on out. One at a time. Hondo Seco's changed a lot in the last six years since I took office. It was wide open, riotous, disorderly. Since then, it's become a law-abiding town. How many hangings did it cost? 
I don't make the laws. No, but you pass sentence, and always the most severe sentence you can. I see no reason for going easy on lawbreakers. Have you ever heard of something called mercy? Men who abide by the law don't need mercy, and the others don't deserve it. Well, not a man can make a mistake. And I do my best to see that he has no chance to repeat it. Father, you're a bitter, bitter man. Don't you see? When you use the word of the law without heart and compassion, that's... That's the worst kind of law-breaking. You may need mercy yourself someday. How can you be so sure that you'll never make a mistake? Go to your room. What do you call it, this thing that makes you act the way you do? A love of justice? I told you to go to your room. Because it isn't love of any kind. Matt, I, I remember when you became a lawyer. a long time ago. Yeah, I remember something else, too. And uh, I guess the, the reason I remember it so well is because I always looked up to you. The, uh, I couldn't read a book plumb through. I was too dumb, I guess. Just being a drover was about the best I could hope for. But, uh, you were different. Maybe that's the reason I remember it so clear. Remembered what? Well, it was something you said uh, on your first case. At the... Uh, Letter of the law kills, but the spirit gives life. I read it. Yeah, you, you read it, but uh, I'm the one that remembered it. Excuse me. Matt, you're still taking revenge, ain't you? Look, no matter how many men die, none of them can bring your wife back. I'd rather not discuss it. Well, maybe you should. Well, you know as well as I, it was an accident. Callahan gets drunk and is thrown out of a saloon one night, and he climbs to his horse and gallops down the middle of the street, firing his gun off. Well, a wild bullet kills your wife. It was a shame, Matt. It was a dirty, low-down shame, but it was an accident. She was 23 years old when she died, with a drug's bullet in her. When you talk to me of mercy. I spoke with no mercy. It was the daughter of the woman who was killed, remember? Joanna's a child. She knows no better. How much better do you know? You're a guest in my house, Jim. Are you staying the night? Well, uh, just how welcome would I be? That's for you to decide. Roddy. Roddy. I ain't on my guard. Roddy, I need a horse. Jim, what are you doing here? What, what do you mean you need a horse? You got one of your own, ain't you? Look, I need a horse real bad. Jim, you've been giving us a rough time for this whole trip. As a matter of fact, everybody in this town has been giving us a rough time. I'd like to know why. Oh, wait a minute, Pete. If, give him a horse. If he don't uh, want to tell us what his business is, we don't want to know about it. This is a family affair. And tell you the truth, I'm not too proud of it. 
Look, we ain't pressing you about it, Jim. I owe you something. I'll tell you this, my brother's a judge in this town. Well, what's that to be ashamed of? Have you ever heard of a hanging judge, Pete? Yeah, that's a judge that if, if he could sentence you to prison for 30 days or hang you to the nearest tree, he'd wind up hanging you. All right, well, that's all I can tell you. Now, listen. I'll... <laughs> Judge Quince, we got his daughter in a place he won't ever find her. If he turns Brad Lyons loose, he'll get his daughter back inside an hour. If he hangs Brad Lyons, we hang his daughter. This is, this is all my fault. She's one needing my horse. I hope to get away from the judge's house. I was going to meet her. Look, I, I got to see my brother. He needs to know about this. Oh, wait, oh, wait a minute. You're not going alone. Look, we, we're forgetting one thing. We got to get those horses back to the herd. Hey, Sus, if, um, if, we're, if we're not back here tomorrow morning, you can hire some more Wranglers to help you with the remuda, can't you? Si, sí, senor. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take uh, Jesus and get the money to him and bring his horse. I'll catch up with you two later. Oh, now, hold on. Now. I can't drag you into this. We're already in this thing, Jim. Come on, let's go. So I was going to take her to Miller's Crossing, put her on the stage for New Mexico, and... I guess that's where Brad Lyons was waiting for. Brad Lyons is in a prison wagon on his way here. Why didn't you tell Joanna that? Whatever you might think of me, Jim, you should realize one thing. I love my daughter. I wanted to spare her as long as I could. All you got to do is send out orders and have this man released then. I can't do that. The man's a prisoner. He's being brought here for trial on a charge of murder. What about Joanna? She was safe here, Jim. If you hadn't interfered, she'd still be safe. Well, you got a right to say that. I did what I thought was right, but it didn't turn out that way. We ain't got time to hum haw about now. We've, it's Joanna we've got to save. I cannot release a man charged with murder. Even if she's killed? That's a bluff. I don't believe they'll do anything to her. You mean you're hoping? What kind of hope is that? I won't think about that. You won't think about that? But you just said you loved your daughter. I'm a judge. I swore to uphold the law. I've done that here, Jim. The people have hated me for it. They still do. But this town is a decent town. There's no violence in the people anymore. I've taught them to respect the law. I can't break it for anyone's sake. She's our own flesh and blood. I know that. You know it. But you don't feel it. Not the way a human being should. Do you know how many killings there are every week in the West? Every day, every hour? I've given my life to fighting against the rule of violence. That's your choice, but you can't give Joanna's life. When a general leads troops into battle, do you think he can allow himself to worry about the number of men who must, who will die in that battle? He might be a better general if he did. Why do you carry that gun strapped to your side? I'll tell you why. Because otherwise your life wouldn't be worth a spent bullet. Because otherwise you couldn't drag your cattle a hundred miles along the trail without being killed yourself and your cattle stolen. There's only one way to stop that. The law must be enforced, ruthlessly and without exception. Maybe what you say is true, but Matt, this is your own daughter. Yes, my only child. The daughter or mother that I love more than anything I've ever loved in this world. As a father, I do whatever that note asks me to. But as a judge, I cannot deal with criminals. Matt, send somebody out to that wagon. I shall. Because I don't think the men who are holding Joanna will stop at that. I think they'll try and attack the wagon. Of course I'll send someone out to the wagon. Additional guards to make sure that Brad Lyons is brought to trial in the town of Hondo Seco and pays the penalty that the law imposes. Matt! Well, he had the right idea, but he was sending the wrong men. How about us going after that wagon? Well, it shouldn't be too hard to find. We know where it's coming from, where it's coming to. Well, let's find it. Judge's brother, I recognize you right away. Well, that's what made it easy. Hey, that chain. Keep the key. Too many 
is Brad Lyons. I am. Hey. I never saw you before. Uh, you got any objections about being freed by a stranger? No objections. Hey, what about me, eh? Huh? Uh, what about you? I didn't, we didn't figure on you. You mean you're gonna let them take me into town and put me away for ten years just because I tried to steal a few measly head of cattle? Quince, there's another Jasper in here. What do we do with him? He stays. I don't want to break any more laws than we have to. Sorry. You take one of the guards' horses. A pleasure. You won't get away with this, judge's brother or not. I'll worry about that when the time comes. You go on now, I'll catch up with you. All right, we're going to get in that wagon. One at a time when I tell you to. Come on, come on. All right, you first. That was just so you won't have to break any more laws than you already have. No sign of Quince. Something must have gone wrong back at that wagon. I didn't hear any shots. Let's get moving. Well, you're sure concerned, aren't you? I never worry about people named Quince, whatever happens to them. Even if the first name's Joanna? What do you know about Joanna? You got friends, mister, and they got ideas, and they've also got Joanna. I don't believe you. Why do you think we risk our neck to get you out of that prison wagon? You like me. Huh. So happens that Jim Quince is Joanna's uncle. Some friends of yours got ideas. They've got Joanna. They threatened to kill her if you're brought in for trial. I didn't ask them to do anything like that. They didn't wait for you to ask. I think I know the place where they'd be holding her. Yeah, well, right now I'm worried about Jim. I don't care what you're worried about. Listen, you. If it wasn't for Jim, you'd be back there on that wagon on the way to a trial and to be hanged. He didn't do a thing for me. If it wasn't for Joanna, he'd probably showed up tomorrow in the front row of people waiting to see me hanged. Yeah, and I'd be right there with him. All right, we can't stay here any longer waiting for Jim. The judge probably sent out deputy as soon as he came to. They pick up our trail, it's not going to do Jim any good. Well, I hate to go off and leave him. Well, you think I like it? You lead out. I don't need your company. Well, you've got it. At least until we find out if that girl's all right. Nice to have you along. You want some of these frijoles? No. Suit yourself. You men are as bad as my father. You're all filled with hate. Thanks for the compliment. If I thought Brad had anything to do with he it... He didn't. I told you he didn't. He didn't have a chance to. Your old man's making sure of that. There is one difference, though, that you better bear in mind. He likes what he's doing. Hold it! Hello, Billings. Ronnie, put your guns away. We're all friends. I sure am glad to see you, Brad. And so am I. Especially since it's not through the courtesy of Judge Quince. Didn't he turn you loose? You ought to know the good judge better than that. Yeah. Uh, how's everything? Joanna? Fine. Uh, right into town. Tell Casey if he still wants to buy the saloon, it's going for a good price today. Right. Now, uh, one more thing. Bring back a couple of good, fast horses, will you? I'll do it. You haven't answered any of my questions. This ain't no courtroom. Wherever a judge is presiding, that's a courtroom. Jim, you've got to tell me where your men took Brad Lyons. And I've told you, I don't know. You and I, we've traveled different roads. We don't look at things the same way. But I know you're an honest man. My brother couldn't be anything but honest. Your brother could be anything, but it just so happens he is honest, Matt. The only thing is, I had no choice. I couldn't let him kill Joanna, even if it meant breaking your law. 
Are you sure by doing what you did, you saved her life? The note said if Brad Lyons was freed, Joanne would be released in an hour. By this time, Brad Lyons should be back with his friends. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. We'll say he got back to them at this very moment. It's a few minutes past three. We'll wait for an hour, Jim. Brad, you wouldn't mind if Bob here would go outside and kind of keep his eyes open, would you? The judge is bound to have some men out looking for you by now. All right, Bob. Miss Joanna, we better get going. We'll take you back to your father now. Brad, I don't want to go back. Well, that was the deal. If Brad Lyons was turned loose, why, well, you're supposed to be returned to your father within an hour. Rowdy and I are kind of anxious to get back to town, if you don't mind. I appreciate what you did for Brad, but I'm not going back. Well, that was the deal. I'm calling for a new deal. Hennigan, they don't need their guns. Put your hands on the table, boys. Well, aren't you going to say something about this, Joanna? I'm going with Brad, wherever he wants me to go. There's already a price on my head. You ought to know that. I don't care. It's not going to be easy. There'll be marshals all over the West looking for me. If they find you, they'll find me with you. Joanna and I won't be able to leave till nightfall. What about your Uncle Jim, Joanna? As far as we know, the guards took him, taking him into Hondo Seco as a prisoner. nothing to worry about. The good judge is not an easy man to get along with, but there's nothing he'd do to his own brother. I've given them an hour, more than an hour. You see, Joanna, I told you, you can't deal with criminals. You broke the law. You set a prisoner free. And for what? So far as you know, Joanna's life may be forfeit just as if you'd done nothing. Maybe so, uh, but I had to try. If I'd known what was going to happen, I still had to try. And even if it was to do again, I... You'll not have the chance again. As the judge presiding in the case of the state versus James Quince in the town of Hunter Seco in Blair County, it's my duty to pass sentence on you. Go ahead. The charge is aiding and abetting a prisoner of the law to escape. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Ain't he entitled to a jury trial, Judge? If he asks for it? A jury trial wouldn't make any difference, sir. Plead guilty. You stand convicted by your own confession of a capital charge. Does making a speech help any man? Oddly enough, Jim, it does. If I were just a man, I don't think I'd have the courage to do what I must do. But I'm a judge now. Judges make speeches, of course it helps them. They can forget that the prisoner at the bar is a human being, is... a brother. I'm not asking you to remember that. How can I forget it? I don't know if I'll ever be able to sleep again, Jim, but I'm going to pass sentence on you. The same sentence I'd pass on any man standing before me charged as you're charged. The prisoner is sentenced to be hanged by the neck until dead. Sheriff, remove the prisoner and prepare to execute the sentence of this court as soon as possible.
need a drink. Lily, you're not starting on the bottle, are you? It's the side of that gallows they're dragging into place outside. It's the thought of what's going on out there that's making me sick. One brother hanging another. It's the difference. They're both quinces, ain't they? Are you ready to go, Casey? Yeah. Lily, I got a little errand to run. Now, there won't be any business for the next couple of hours, so as soon as you finish that drink, shut the front door, will you? Now, how soon are you going to be back? As soon as I finish my errand. Won't be long. Themselves, Hennigan? Like a couple of little lions. Who's that? It's me, Casey. Come in. Hey. Well, good to see you, Brad. Casey, you bring the horses? Two of them outside. Also brought you something else. The price we agreed on for the saloon. I'm glad to be able to pay it to you. You and me both. Too bad you can't be in town right now. Something real peculiar is going on. What? The judge is hanging his own brother. Stay right where you are. Uncle Jim? I guess he would be your uncle, ma'am. I didn't think he'd do it. Well, they're doing it all right. They were getting the scaffold ready when I rode out. Fred, we got to stop this. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Yeah, that's right, Lyons. There's nothing you can do about it. Just run, and you've done that before. Nobody asked your opinion. Well, I ain't charging you for it. Fred, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Give them their guns. You don't know what you're saying. You're running your head right into a noose. I know what I'm doing. It's my neck. All right. There you are, boys. Come on, Case. You want to ride into town with me? Let's go. Judge. You don't have to be present in no hanging. This is one hanging he's gonna watch. You do like I say. Guess she doesn't have much stomach for hangings. To tell the truth, I ain't either. something for this. I got no doubt you'll repay me. You can still stop this. Sentence has been passed. Then take a look at your brother before we drop him through the trap.
shouldn't rush things till you find out if you've got the right man. Why is the execution being delayed? What charge is this man being hanged on? For aiding and abetting a criminal to escape from a prison wagon. The criminal hasn't escaped. He's standing right here. He's right here, and a prisoner. The fact that an escaped prisoner has been apprehended does not exonerate the man responsible for his escape. There's not enough rope in the whole of the West to satisfy your appetite, is there? Mr. Lyons belongs in jail till after he's been tried and convicted. In the meantime, you'll proceed with the execution. You be your own hangman, Judge. I order you to... What do you think you're doing? I only take my orders from the sheriff. There don't seem to be one around. this open breaking of the law? Are you going to tolerate murderers running loose among you? I have two fast horses and a woman who loves me, ready to ride away with me. Away from this town. Away from the poison sickness you've brought to it. If I was a murderer, would I come back here? If I was a murderer, would I have cared how many innocent men you hanged? Are you denying that you shot and killed a man two weeks ago? I pulled the trigger, Judge Quince. You fired the gun. If you hadn't sent that man after me... You were stealing my daughter from me. I was going away with the woman I loved, the woman who loved me. You're a gambler, a saloon keeper. You live off people's weaknesses. My daughter's mother... You haven't answered my question, Judge Quince. Who's the murderer? Seeing you up there, Jim. I didn't like being up there, Rowdy. Brad, can they still do something to you? I think the charges have been dropped.
I'm worried about Father. Well, maybe I better go to the house. Let him go, Joanna. We're different men, him and me, but we're still brothers. When I hurt real bad, I, I just want to be left alone. And afterwards? Afterwards? Well, he'll go to another town. And after a while, he'll hang up his shingle and start practicing again. Well, that's his life, Joanna. Maybe he'll remember. Second Corinthians, chapter three, verse six. I'll pray to God he does. trying, but I think he's getting to know who's boss. Eh, it's no place to be picking a gut twister. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Favor. He'll learn. You watch. I'll make his best cutter than Ramuda. Well, sell him down or I'll have to sell him off. Any sign of Craddock's herd yet? No. Pete's out looking for him now. What happens if they don't show up? He will. Told me in Laredo he had sunk every last cent he had into this herd. If we don't pick him up, he will go bust. He ain't a cattle man, huh? I just fly by nighter, picking up the stock from the smaller spreads, gambling on good prices in Abilene. Well, maybe he ain't worth waiting for. Just Pete now, he'll make up our minds for us. Good! Hold him up! Find the credit herd? Yeah, sure did. They'll be coming over that rise any second, but don't ask me how he did it. What do you mean? No use in me telling you. You wouldn't believe it unless you saw it. Is that there, Craddock? Uh, it's probably one of his drovers. <laughs> What's the point? Just wait. you kill favor? Just be me. Forrest was the name. Clay Forrest. You've been expecting my beeves, I think. Yours? I'm expecting Roy Craddock's herd. Well, it's the same thing. I'm his trail boss. He turned them over to me. Oh. Consignment papers. Something bothering you, Roddy? Where are your drovers, Forrester? You ain't got them all on drag, have you? Well, I ain't got them, period. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're, you're not telling me you brought these cattle in all by yourself. You've got eyes. Oh, wait a minute, Forrester. Well, the way I see it, a trail boss that really knows his business doesn't need much more than a good lead steer. I haven't a set of brains wouldn't do no harm. Pete, get some of the men and bring them on in. You don't have to bother. I'll get them down myself. No, no, I'm responsible for them now. I may not know what I'm doing, but I know enough not to take fool chances like that. Pete, I want a full tally on them. Right. 
Well, you're going to a lot of trouble, Faber. Those consignment papers check out all right. Oh, it shouldn't take too long. I know you wouldn't mind. Welcome to stay for supper if you want. Supper? I was expecting to make the whole drive with you. I could use another hand, if droving's all you got in mind. Since there's nothing else. Rowdy? Yeah, it's all right with me. We start out on drag. Drag? Now, hold on. Every new man in this outfit starts out on drag. Where you wind up is up to you. All right, fair enough. Not that far from the bottom to the top. I guess I'll start with my own beeves. Think he's half as good as he thinks he is? One way to find out, work him. I told you it'd work. No questions? None that I couldn't answer. Dave is not as stupid as you think. Or as you think either, Craddock. With a full crew, he'd never put on another 10 drovers. Well, maybe not. But I still don't see how you figure you can handle them all by yourself. Handle the key man, favor, his ramrod and his scout, and the rest are easy. Now you see that you and the men are at the right place at the right time. Real sure yourself, ain't you? Uh-huh. But it looks like you're not. It's my herd we're risking down there, not yours. 750 head for 3,000? Well, it seems to me that's worth a little risk. Wait a minute. Where are you going? I have a job now. And I'm going to make a good impression on the boss. much. You could save yourself a day, maybe more, by swinging the herd, cutting south following the creek bed. Pete? Well, there's a creek over there, all right, but it's running full of water when I saw it. Well, it rained up in the hills last night. That's just the wash coming down. It'd be hardly a trickle by tonight. Any quicksand? You don't have to worry about that. Well, maybe it might be better than scaling those canyon walls. They might follow that creek all the way through, Pete. Take a look at the valley on the other side. It might make good bed ground. Anything else I can do while I'm up? No, that'll be all. It's, uh, is that a long ways from drag up to that creek? No, I had some off time. I took a little ride to wash the dust off. It is maybe, uh, you know this part of the country too, huh? Yeah, maybe. How do you say you're ready to move up? Why don't you relieve Quince and flank? Anything you say. You'd be real glad to get out of that dust for a while. Well, there's no dust at all up at the point. Settle for anything yet. Just happens to be what I'm doing right now. What before? Oh, ranch hound, wrangler, freighter, scout. Boy, that same as everybody else, soldier. I just 
I would marry told you, though, not you. Part of that way. Finished up a major. Ah, I think. And then right back to nothing. No more war, so no more commission. You're good enough to get killed, but not good enough to keep. Except maybe as a corporal. And you don't like riding drag? For anybody. Uh, plenty of good chances after the war. A lot of good majors, too, just like me. But the chances were all at the bottom. Kind of drifting any better? I never can tell where I'm going to wind up. For the moment, right here. Yeah, I'm not riding drag. You're not at the top, neither. It's kind of crowded up there right now. Well, it's not so far from the bottom to the top. Just those last couple of steps that are so rough. Big Mouth's the one that really found it. Forrester, huh? You got a little sour apple stuck in his crow. Oh, it ain't that. It's just, well, he ain't just half as good as he says he is. He's about twice. Yeah, I am getting kind of tired of that fella. Well, oh, he's causing that much trouble now. No, it's not that. He's doing a good job. One of these days, I'm gonna knock that block off his shoulder. It may not be that easy. Seems like it's nailed on. Well, I guess we'd better get busy. Suppose she needs help? I'm sure you hope. Noon, miss. Anything we can do? No, thank you. Easy. Ah, no wonder he lost a shoe. I'm afraid if you ride him, you're ruined for sure. I'm well aware of that. It's a long walk back to town. I can manage. Oh, I understand how you feel, us being strangers and all, but you do need help. No, thank you. Our herd's right over that rise. We can get a shoe on in no time, and you can be on your way. Listen, don't you understand English for the last time? No, thank you. Look, ma'am, he's only trying to help you out. Listen, will you, will you please leave me alone? Whatever you say, miss. Boss, we can't just go off and leave her here like this. Lady knows what she's doing. Oh, by the way, I don't suppose you've got a gun, do you? What difference does it make? Well, it doesn't matter to me, but you can't possibly make it back to town before nightfall, so I'd suggest you make camp early, get a fire going, keep it going all night. That just might scare the Panthers away. Well, so long, miss. Oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. Yeah, but there are laws against kidnapping. Yeah, but... but... Oh, please, wait! Let's keep him moving. There's some good bed ground up ahead. Oh, you found it, huh? Yeah, I found it. Looks like that's not all you found. That's all you're concerned with. Oh, neighbor's personal property? He's just lending her a hand. Good. You tell him I'll be around later to lend a hand to myself. You just do your job. You ready, Bailey? What does it look like? Come on, boy, hurry. We haven't got all day here. Well, I'm hurrying, Mr. Richfield. Son, I told you to empty that on the fire. I'll get forward. 
Well, what are you standing there for? It's Mr. Faber. Oh, it is, huh? Well, if he thinks he's going to get anything to eat, he's got another thing coming. You get it when it's here, or you don't get it at all. And that goes for... What kind of a scouting trip you suppose that was? Which one? Could you warm up a cup of coffee for the lady? Coffee? Why, well, sure. Yeah, what are you doing with that? Well, you told me to... Never mind what I told you. Get a clean cup and don't forget the saucer. Saucer? Yes, yeah, a saucer. Yeah, I'll get Asus to put a shoe on this horse. He ought to be all right in no time. Good. Okay, then go out and shake up the men. I want the herd in bed ground before sundown. Oh, we'll make it. Well, you make sure we make it. Well, I, I kind of thought that... Uh, you know... Thought? What? Nothing. Oh. Oh, right over this way. Nothing. See? Nothing to be afraid of. Put that back on the fire. Sorry to serve it to you like this, ma'am, but all our good crockery's been put away. Well, this is just fine. Thank you. Mr. Uh, uh, Wishbone, uh, cook. Uh, this is Miss Sheila Brewster. Hi. I do. Uh, may I get you something else, ma'am? Maybe a sandwich or something? Oh, no, no, this is just fine. Thank you. Maybe you could try getting me a cup of coffee. Huh? I'll see what I can do. Oh, you just move out in this area, Miss Brewster? Well, um, no, I'm visiting friends. In town? Mm-hmm. I'm probably worried about you. Well, yes, I, I suppose they are, so um, as soon as you can get that shoe on my horse, I'd... It'll just be a few minutes, then I'll uh, have a man going to town with you. Oh, oh no. Well, I, I don't want to put you in any more trouble. Well, no trouble. Besides, that road to Clarksville is pretty bad in the dark. Well, I can manage it, believe me. Oh, I'm sure of it. I'd feel better about it. Senor Fair. Excuse me a minute. The horse Senor Rowdy bringing it, it belongs to the Senorita. Uh-huh. That's very strange. The horse has the brand of the United States Cavalry. Nothing strange about it. It's also got a cavalry saddle. How did she get it? I ain't asked you yet. Look, you uh, get the horse shot and then keep it with our strength. Si, Senor. Will it be much longer, Mr. Faber? No, only until you level with me, Miss Brewster. Level? I, I don't know what you mean. About where you got that army mount. It, it's the horse they gave me. Your friends in Clarksville? Yes. Yes, the only trouble with that is there's no such place as Clarksville around here. Listen, you have no right to question me. Will you, will you just give me my horse back and let me go? Look, I don't want to have the army or the law down on my neck. I'll let you go when you tell me where you got the horse and what you're doing out here. Well, will you just let me go and forget you ever saw me? Sorry, Miss Brewster. Well, you can't keep me here. What say I take you into town, then, the Sheriff? You wouldn't dare. You haven't given me any reason not to. What? Oh, please, Mr. Favor, I beg you. All right, here's your coffee. No, no, Miss. After all the trouble I went to... Hey, stay back, Mr. Favor. Now, look, put that down before you hurt somebody, please. I'm warning you. Look out, boss. It's worse than if she knew what she was doing. Yeah. Please, Miss Brewster. My horse, Miss, your favor. I just want my horse, and I want to get out of here. Are you any good with that, Miss? I hope you are, because I'm going to give you three to hand that back. Otherwise, you'd better start shooting. Well, hold on. Hold on now. It's a shame to put a hole in such a pretty face. One, two... Oh, boy! Oh, now look what you got and done. You made her cry. That's a funny thing, Wishbone. It's what I usually do to women. <laughs> I just want to get out of here. Looking for somebody, Clay? Oh, yeah. You, I'm uh, hungry. Now, go ahead. You're relieved. Thanks. Oh, wait a minute. Huh? Boss wanted me to tell you. When we start moving out again, you'll be working with me. With you? You mean scouting? Yeah, with both of us working out front, we can cover more country and find the best trail in less time. Makes sense. Hope you don't mind. I don't mind. 
is my idea. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Easy, Clay. Just some old friends. What are you doing this close to the herd? It's been a long time between visits. I haven't had a chance to get away. That's why we're this close. And sticking our necks out. My men are Richie. They're getting tired of just sitting around doing nothing. Maybe they prefer sweating and eating dust all day, pushing a herd. Yeah, now that you mention it, they would. Especially if it's theirs. Why the stall? It's the way we figured it, the herd's in the right place. And I'm the one who got it here. I'll say thank you when the whole job's done. The herd will lay over in this valley for a spell. And I'll uh, talk the trail boss into it. What's the advantage of that? There's a town beyond the ridge. The droves will be let loose on it, half crew at a time. We'll be watching for them. Is that you, Quint? Quint! I will take care of it, Senor Clay. Trying, Mr. Favor, honestly. Coming out west, marrying an officer, living in a camp. It all seemed like the most wonderful and exciting dream come true. I don't know why I'm telling you all of this. No, maybe if you told somebody else sooner, you wouldn't even be out here now. Well, what happened to change this dream of yours? Oh, I don't know. Everything seems so different. The people, the kind of life. So crude and harsh. Well, it's a new country. It's bound to be a little crude. Mm, perhaps, but I'm not used to it. What about this fiancé of yours? Uh, you find him any different? Oh, I suppose not. Oh, he, he helped me. He, he, he made things easy for me, but he didn't understand. Understand what exactly? I was lonely and frightened, and I needed him so much, but he was never there. I hardly had a minute with him. Well, you ought to know an army officer can't call his time his own. Not even for his own wedding. The day before we were to be married, he went off on some kind of patrol. I didn't even unpack my own wedding dress. Well, a patrol doesn't last forever. And I don't imagine he's having the best time in the world. What do you think he's going to feel when he comes back and finds you gone? Well, he'll be hurt, I suppose, but he'll get over it. And it'll be better this way. For him or for you? For both of us. Don't you see, I can't marry him. Feeling the way I do about his kind of life, hating every minute of it. I'd make him miserable. Seems he at least ought to have a chance to have his say. What's the use? He can't change the way I feel. So I'd appreciate it if you'd let me go. I have enough money to buy a ticket back home. I can leave the horse in town. The army can get it back. Whatever you say. You can leave tomorrow when Wishbone goes in for supplies. Thank you, Mr. Favor. Here you are, Miss Bruce. It's nice and hot. Oh, thank you, Mr. Yates. I'll take that for you. What's the matter? Is she a cripple or something? What? Well, it seems to me if she's healthy enough to go running wild all over this country, she's healthy enough to clean up her own mess. Maybe you ought to learn to keep your big fat mouth shut. Not me, Rowdy. Not when there's something that needs saying. Nobody asked you. Just a minute, Mr. Yates. I'd like to hear his opinion. No, you wouldn't. It's not very flattering. I'm willing to listen. All right. Where do you get off expecting everything to be so perfect? What have you done to deserve the world tied up in a pretty pink ribbon? I don't. No? Some poor Jasper asked you to marry him and he isn't enough. You have to have everything else, the way you want it. People, the country, the kind of living. Now, why does it all have to change for you? Do you ever think of uh, meeting things halfway? Go on. 
You're not just lonely and frightened. You're scared green. So scared you're running. Instead of grabbing hold and fighting it out. Making the best of it. Well, I've tried. No, you haven't. And you never will. So you go on back home where it's warm and safe and comfortable. Where you can have everything you want just the way you want it. All served up on a silver platter by dumb jaspers like him. Thank you for your interest, Mr. Forrester. Anytime. Good night. You know, I sure wish you were stupid or didn't know your job or something. And I'd have an excuse to knock the tar out of you. Say, that was uh, quite a speech, Clay. I thought you'd get so head up about anything. Mm, she rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> so I noticed. You know, it's a funny thing now, now. People most hate in others what uh, they most hate in themselves. Besides the ones you brought in, can't be through Brandon much before noon. Can we uh, roll out? Ah, I've been thinking. We've been making good time. We don't have much chance of finding grass or water as good as this again, so might as well lay over till tomorrow and give the men a rest. Yeah, might as well. Oh, Wish. You can uh, go into town, get supplies anytime you want. Be a long, empty stretch ahead of us. All right. No money, no supplies. Yeah. Oh, another thing. See that. Uh, Miss Brewster gets on the stage, you're all right. Poor little thing, she hardly slept a wink all last night. Heard her tossing and turning, crying even. Oh, too bad. and be quiet about it. Don't want you waking up that little lady. Oh. Good morning, miss. Did you have a good night's sleep? Yes, thank you. Well, fine, you just sit right down and I'll rustle you some breakfast. Oh, no, you don't have to go to any trouble. No, it's no trouble at all. Thank you. Beautiful morning, isn't it? Isn't it? Is uh, Mr. Favor around? Yeah, no, he just left out to do some branding. But he told me to be sure you got on the stagecoach. I'll be ready in about an hour. Well, there's no hurry. Well, you just let me know when you're ready, ma'am. Uh, buttons are at the bottom of the box. But you don't have to do it, you know. Well, I want to. Uh, fine, you just go right ahead. Uh, you like it, Chris? Yes, I love it. Fine. How about a fresh horse, Jesus? Any one of these, Senor Clay? Mm -hmm. Why not? He belonged to somebody? Well, in a way, he's not fully broken, and Senor Scarlett is the only one who can ride him. Ah, you mean the only one so far? Senor, no, you will be hurt. Senor, please, Senor! Who's that saddling my horse? The new drover, Senor Forrester. He's either short on brains or long on nerve, and he's liable to get both kicked out of him. I tried to stop him. Why? Let him learn for himself.
Good horse. Too bad nobody's broken him in proper. You have to pick that horse. He ain't ready for cutting yet. Maybe nobody's been ready to use him for cutting. You think you're good enough? I didn't bring him out here for nothing. Maybe a little showboating, though, huh? Any unbranded strays left in this bunch? No, I think we got them all. Let's go. Hey, there's one. Hey, come back here. Look at that stupid... I thought he was supposed to be a hand. around and get himself a hip pocket full of horns. That was a stupid stunt. You don't take any prizes for brains either. Look, I don't like digging graves and I don't like losing good hands. Well, thanks anyway. You get in there and see Wishbone, he'll fix that arm up. I'll get your... Just a scratch. Not enough to keep you out of any work, anyway. Thanks, Wishbone. Here. I'm gonna wrap that up. I'll do it, Wishbone. I don't need any help from... Just hold still, Mr. Forrester. I, uh, thought this kind of thing was too crude for you. People can usually adjust to things when they're honest with themselves. Are you honest with yourself, Mr. Forrester? Hmm? Do you practice what you preach? What do you mean? Accepting things the way they are, meeting people halfway. Oh, that was very good advice you gave me. Look, uh, get down with it, will you? You'll hurt yourself. You know, these people that you talk about, being scared green? Well, these people that are frightened, they usually do one of two things. They run or they attack. They keep challenging, they keep fighting back. And that's exactly what you're doing. Me? Oh, you're so scared, you're so frightened of others not accepting you, disliking you, and you make sure of it. Of all the crazy ideas. Well, sometimes it doesn't work out. At least not here. Not with Mr. Favor and Rowdy and all the others. And they see through you. In spite of yourself, they see through you. Well, how does it feel? I don't know what you're talking about. The bandage. Hmm? Is it comfortable? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, here, I'll, I'll clean and mend this. Get yourself another shirt. Damage? I'm all right. All right, you take it easy. We're about finished up here. Still pretty early. How about pushing on? The boy's got a rest coming. We'll lay over till tomorrow. Well, it's a shame to waste the time. Got it to waste? Go on back. Relax. Yeah. Well, anything you say. Some place. Where's everybody else? Back away is all set to go. What about you? Well, that's what I came up to tell you. 
It's about time. Baines, get the man. You won't need him. That's supposed to mean something? I'm cutting out. Deal's off. Just like that. And no sense of going into reasons you wouldn't understand anyway. I understand this. You were in on this from the beginning. We worked it out together, and I spent every last cent I could get my hands on for that herd. You'll get it back when we get to Abilene. Even make a good profit. You think I'd settle for that when I can get that whole herd? Can you? Favor will have something to say about that. You tell him? Oh, but I will if you try anything. And what if I tell him? You better play it my way, Craddock. Make an honest dollar for a change. Put that thing away. You want Favors men to hear you. What difference does it make now? Uh, nothing's changed that much. That herd's still down in the valley. We're still here. Just have to figure another angle, that's all. Yeah. You just saved Forrester for me. Well, it's funny what'll happen to a man when he gets religion. I'm just looking around. Found some good grazing the other side of the ridge. Ought to be able to make it by sundown if we started now. What are you all the time pushing for? I just think we ought to roll while the rolling's good. And we'll rest while the resting's good. Look, for the last time, take it easy, will you? What are you still doing here? Why aren't you in town? Well, Miss Brewster wasn't ready to go yet, and well, anyway, I had to get something ready for the fellas to eat. What is the project now, Miss Brewster? Going into the tailoring business? <laughs> well, it all started with a button on Wishbone's vest, and the rest of your men saw me, and I couldn't resist them. Oh, it really wasn't necessary. Well, I think it is, Mr. Favor. You, you've all been so kind, and this... This seems to be the only way I can show my gratitude. All right, but uh, I'm afraid you're going to have to disappoint some of the men. You see, Wishbone has to get into town right after dinner, so you'd bit, better get ready to go. Did Mr. Forrester come back? I uh, just left him over at the string. Well, fine. I think this belongs to him. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me at all if I ended up going into town all by my lonesome. Hey, Bart. Any chance to give Garson Collins the day off? Day off? Yeah, I've been making my rounds. I couldn't find him anywhere. What? Well, pretty close to town. Close enough for temptation to some of the fellas. You better get tempted to get another job, then. You got somebody out covering him? Yeah, I had uh, Quince and Mapes out there. Well, yeah, just be on the safe side. In case they got themselves into trouble, you better send somebody out to check on them. Right. Hey, we got to keep Miss Brewster around here. She's doing a heck of a job. Take a bigger man than you are. I just thought you'd want to know. I've made a decision. I'm not going to run anymore. I'm going to stay. Up to you. Doesn't it make any difference? To me? Why should it? You had a great deal to do with it. Look, Miss Booster, I don't know what you're driving at. I may have said a few things I shouldn't have, but... Uh, you said a few things yourself. They were true. All right, they were true. But um, whether you go back east or whether you stay here, uh, I don't care one way or another. I see. I'm sorry I bothered you. It's your shirt. I mended it. Uh, Miss Brewster. Don't go getting yourself all mixed up again. You told me to be honest and meet people halfway. Yeah, the right people, the right things. Not some crazy notion you picked up because you were confused and scared. You got a good thing going. A good life ahead of you with that soldier. Don't throw it away. No, I, I won't. Thank you for helping me. Anytime. I wish I could have returned the favor. Maybe you have.
things nice and easy. It's too bad it can't be this way all the time. Yeah. You seen Quince anywhere? Last hour or so. Something wrong? I don't know. I can't find him. They don't think he took off. I don't know what to think. You keep an eye open for him. You find him, you send him to me. Right. Mushy! What do you think you're doing? Uh, picking up the lantern spoon, you scared it out of my hand, Mr. Wishbone. If I may be so bold as to ask, what were you doing with a ladle in the first place? We're dishing out the new meal, Mr. Wishbone. For who? Ghosts? I don't see any live drovers around. Well, you will. I bet they're breaking their necks to get here right this minute. Well, they know you don't like latecomers. <laughs> they know better than that. I don't even serve latecomers. That's what I said, Mr. Wishbone. I think. It was five of them didn't even show up for breakfast. What makes you think any of them are going to show up for noon meal? Well, we're all scared of you, Mr. Wishbone. I know, I know I am. Scared of me? Well, not scared like birds of a scarecrow, but we respect you, you. Hey, wish you seen Scarlet around anywhere? Well, you got eyes, you can see where he isn't. Go ask the boss. Now, how do you expect me to keep this warm if you keep putting it out in empty places like that? Get it back here and put it on fire. Some of those fellows are liable to be late. I'm afraid it's worse than we thought. How many men did you send after Garson and Collins? I sent three of them. I sent Scarlett, Dean, and Morgan. Did they back yet? Nothing came back except Scarlett's horse a few minutes ago. Well, that's seven men. What could it be? That's about time we found out. Get a hold of some of the men. Hold on, Favor. I'll tell you what happened to them. How do you know? Craddock's got them. We uh, plan to take over the whole herd. All 3,000 hit. See it plain. Well, it can't be any planner. We wanted your herd. It was set up from the beginning. The only reason I joined your outfit was to get you to the right place and to pick the right time for his men to take over. This is the right place in time? Well, except for one thing. I didn't pick it. I uh, cut out on him last night. Walked out on the whole deal. So um, he's uh, working this on his own. You expect us to swallow this? You better, or you can kiss those beeves goodbye. I'll tell you what we're gonna do, we're gonna kiss you goodbye. You suit yourself, but I won't fetch a penny a pound at Abilene, and I'll be all you have left. What are we talking for? There's only one way to handle rustlers. Wait a minute. You cut out on credit. Didn't have to tell us. You'd never know. It's a trick. His mouth's so big he can talk out of both sides at the same time. You don't want to believe me? You take a look at the facts. Now, Craddock's already picked off seven of your men. Maybe he's got a couple of more by now. How many guns does that leave you? How are you going to stand him off and guard that herd at the same time? You know. All right, if you let us know where his camp is, we can go hit him. No, that won't work, Favor. Not as long as he's got your men. He'll gun them down before you even get close. No, somebody's going to have to get to them first, cover them. Somebody? Yeah, me. He's trying to talk his way out. Why you? Well, chances are I can talk him into believing that I've switched again. No, talking would be enough to convince him that you'd switched again some kind of proof. Proof? Yeah, like uh, me as a prisoner, for instance. Boss, have you gone loco? All right, Clay. How do you get the men guard the herd? We don't make it. Do what you can. Craddock's getting a bigger edge all the time. How far off his camp? Up in the hills, but I wouldn't be surprised if his men were a lot closer. Probably watching us right now. Better start acting like I'm your prisoner. Yeah. Which way? Up there. See that draw? Yeah. You got me stumped, Clay. Coming back like this, I just don't figure it. There's nothing hard about it. You know I like the edge, and when you start picking off Craddock's men, the odds change, that's all. They did, huh? We well, have got them, Angel. Nine of them, right back there. You uh, don't take any chances, do you? Not with anybody. 
Come on, take it easy. I brought him in, didn't I? Yeah, it was mighty simple, wasn't it? All I had to do was play it innocent, like I wanted to spring his men. And then when I got him alone, there was no problem at all to take him. That's how it happened, Craddock. I saw him. Oh, yeah. Well, how about it, Craddock? Do we start moving out? Only a dozen or so drovers left. 3,000 head of cattle, ours for the taking. Ours? You Welsh, then you think you can come back and pick up right where you left off, huh? You need me, Craddock. You'll never get that herd to Abilene without a good trail, boss. You know, with you along, I might never reach Abilene. You see, Clay, I like the edge, too. Too bad, because you haven't got it. You sneaked in and picked off Favor's men one at a time. I told you to play it my way, Craddock. Now, while you were and I are having this friendly little talk, some of uh, Favor's men came in and picked off all yours. Take a good look around, Craddock. The uh, ones holding the guns are Favor's men. The uh, ones they're hurting are yours. All right, that's enough. Ah, you pick up the drift real fast. Do I? How do you know Rowdy and Pete were going to show up? You look at it this way. The way you had faith in me, I had faith in your men. And thank you for everything, Mr. Faber. It's all your own doing. I hope you and your soldier will be very happy. Well, I know we will. Now, let's see if we can get Mr. Forrester straightened up. He'd do well to stay here with us. Uh -huh. As soon as I get Miss Brewster back to the fort, I'll just mosey around, see what I can pick up. Couldn't do much better in here. Well, maybe not. But the uh, only trouble with here is there's no room at the top. You know me. Goodbye, Mr. Favor. Good luck. So long. Say, when you were talking to Craddock last night, you, know, you almost had me believe in you. Almost. Still can't help wondering. I guess you'll never know that. See you around. Hit him up! Move him out! Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. for days and ditching to stampede. Can't understand it. This is as far as we're going today. We'll make camp right now. All right. Whoa, whoa, come on, come on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Quieto, quieto. Whoa. Listen to them cattle. I hear them only too well. It ain't natural. Maybe they smell a storm coming up. There wouldn't be a storm on the Chisholm Trail this time of year. See you, boss. Yeah. The horses, they are very restless tonight. No reason they should be any different from the rest of the cattle or us. I will need some help with them. You'll get it. What are you going to do, double the night guard? I want everybody in the saddle. Look, it's been a long day. I want everybody in the saddle now. I wonder where they're going. Oh, shut up. She didn't say nothing. Then why'd I hear you? I must have said something. Now, where do you think you're going with those things? Stow them in a wagon? They're dirty. You're not going to stow them in my wagon. You want me to stow them in a supply wagon? No, I don't want you to stow them in the supply wagon. I want you to wash them. Well, Mr. Wishbone, that stream is near a mile from here. Well, you got feet, haven't you? Big ones, too. Well, whatever you say, Mr. Wishbone. I already said it.
mushy how many times I gotta tell you, I don't care how long the sourdough's been fermenting, it couldn't make you drunk. I must be drunk, Mr. Wishbone. Have you been at my medicine bottles? You know I wouldn't do that. Then what could have made you drunk? You ever been drunk before? No, sir. Then what makes you think you're drunk now? Well, nobody could have seen what I seen out there unless there was. All right. Tell me again. What did you see? Well, you wouldn't believe me, Mr. Wishbone. I'll try. Well, I... Well, I seen this... And then there was a... Uh... Oh, Mr. Wishbone, I seen him, but I don't believe it. Stock second. We're not moving to hurt anymore today. Keeping them here sure hasn't helped any. And they ain't stampeded yet. Scarlet, beat now right on ahead. You keep the men in their saddles. Have Wishbone get breakfast to them one way to another. Sure, boss. We're riding on ahead looking for what? We sure ain't very bright, but they always got reason for doing what they do. We're looking for that reason. Splitting up would double our chances. Right. Scal is in one of his moods again. Well, you know how he is when we're, we're together. But we've got to rehearse. Morning. Are you a guide, cowboy? Not a guide nor a cowboy neither. And it's a terrible morning. Oh? Say, uh, you notice an elephant around? Yeah, on that ridge back up there. Well, I better go collect him. <laughs> I wonder what he thinks of Texas. <laughs> well, if you're, uh, you're not a cowboy and you're not a guide, what are you? Uh, I'm trail boss. Name's Favor. Well, trail boss of what? Drovers. My name's Dario. Acrobat, high wire man, and anything else Pascal can think of. Let me ask you, uh... What is a, a drover? We're taking a herd of cattle up the Chisholm Trail. Is that where we are? You mean you don't know where you are? No. Our guide rode off yesterday. Quit. Maybe because Pascal insulted him. Or maybe because he just got tired of working without being paid. Uh, Pascal, is it the man who owns this outfit? Yes. Uh, I'd like to talk to him. Well, that's his wagon over there. Thanks. Mr. Pascal? Yeah. Pascal. Just no last name, no title. Just Pascal. Oh, my name's Favor. I'm a trail boss. I got a herd of 3,000 head close by. Head of what? Beeves. All right. What are beeves? Oh, cows, cattle. And uh, they've caught the scent of your lion. They're awful edgy. Well, my lion is kept behind bars. Well, beef doesn't know that. What you want from me is a written statement that you can show them, is that it? Oh, it's just that I, I can't move my herd until your lion is far enough away they don't get his scent. My lion stays with me. Well, where are you headed for, then? Braley. Braley, Texas, if there is such a place. 
Oh, there is. It's about uh, 30 miles northwest of here. Well, I'm relieved. The Great Western Circus is booked into Braley for a gala performance, and I'm delighted it's only 30 miles northwest. <laughs> I wish my circus were. Well, um, all you have to do is, is follow the trail. Ever sail a ship? No. Oh, my people can't follow a trail. <laughs> Not for five minutes without getting lost. Is your herd on its way there? Mm -hmm. Well, then my suggestion is that we drive along with you. Oh, I'd make the herd edgier than ever. Ah. Uh. Well, we'll just wait for a favoring wind to blow us to Braley. Yeah, you know, I've got a better idea. I could send my scout. He could take you into Braley. How much does your scout get paid? Oh, you don't have to worry about that. I pay him. Well, in that case, I won't haggle. How soon can you have him here? An hour or less. Jenny! Yes? I imagine the trail boss is in a hurry. We should be ready to move as soon as the scout gets here. So if you will use your charms on Dario and wake up Orlando, maybe the two of them will strike the tents and our wagons will be ready for moving. If you want the tents struck, Pascal, all you have to do is ask me. I know that, Dario. Just that lately I can't ever seem to find you. You're always off somewhere with Jenny. Do you want the tent struck? If it wouldn't be too much trouble. Did I say something I shouldn't have? My wife, Mr. Favor, is very beautiful, isn't she? I'm sure my scout will be here and by the time. Jenny is 25. I'm 53. As soon as you're through with him, uh, you can come She's on back. She's very beautiful, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah, very beautiful. Now, my friends. You're on one side of the bars and I'm on the other. Which of us is the prisoner? Real big animal, huh? He's bigger than a chuck wagon. And where was his tail? In the right place? I don't know if it's in the right place or not. Fit the back end, I guess. Well, that's where a tail ought to be. I think you're right, Mr. Wishman. Wish? You seen Pete? Isn't he with you? Oh, Mr. Favor. Did you find anything out there? Yeah, I found plenty. A kind of a big animal? An elephant. A real live elephant. What do you know? Bigger than the truck wagon? About the same size. I found plenty else, too. What's that? A whole traveling circus with a lion. Out here? Yeah, he's on the way to Braley. They got lost. Their guide ran out on them. It's the scent of that lion and elephant they have that's making the herd so jumpy. I'm going to have to send Pete to take him into Braley, get him out of our way. Oh, something else. Was there kind of a little short man? Shorty. I've been having a real hard time believing, Mushy. Looks like he was telling the truth. Well, I always do. I ain't smart enough to make up anything, Mr. Wishbone. Uh, Mr. Fravor, there isn't any telling when Pete might get back. We won't be able to move the herd until we get that outfit off the trail. And I'm running kind of short of supplies, so I was thinking you if I... You ain't no scout. Well, anybody can find Braley. You don't need a scout for that. Besides, I am kind of running short of supplies. Since when? Well, since... this circus and I got a real hankering to see me a real live elephant. You know... You just might be a better man for the job after all. Well, I'm always a better man. Why? You got a beard. Which I've had for quite some time. That's just the point. You had it long enough for it to get gray. So that makes me better than Pete. Yeah, I don't think Pascal would mind having you around. Who's Pascal? The owner of the circus. All right, take the supply wagon and get on over there. It's about four miles north of here. I'm on my way. And Wishbone. Those uh, circus people are kind of strange outfit. Don't get mixed up with them. You mind your own business. I always do. Well, try to mind your own business anyway. Mudgy, you'll be doing the cooking for the next three, four days. There won't be any trouble, Mr. Favor. Yeah. Uh, you'd, you'd better stick to stew, huh? You like my stew? 
Well, there's just not much anybody can do for Stu one way or the other. You know, I figure it just might be safer that way for everybody. Yes, sir, a real live elf. Just about as big as the chuck wagon. Are you the new guy the trail boss promised us? For once, that mushy was right. Well, I yell, ain't you? Am I what? The new guy. Yes, sir, mister, I'm gonna take you to Braley. My name's Wishbone. G.W. Wishbone. Shorty. 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 Don't you think you've had enough? Or what you try to do? Drink your way through the Southwest? Drink my way through the rest of my life. <sighs> You're a clown, Shorty. You're one of nature's clowns. Thanks. I'm a clown by art and tradition. Created myself. Seven generations of bicycles did before me. Not many men can say that. Most men are what they were born to be. Could you, by willing it, have added one inch to your miserable stature? You think I wanted to be the way I am? Oh, no. That's your tragedy. I did want to be the way I am. That's mine. Larry and Jenny, they make a good combination on the wire, don't they? They're a fine act, Pascal. On and off the wire. That's so. On the wire. Off the wire, Jenny's your wife. I know that. And you know that. She knows it, too. Yeah, but it bothers her, doesn't it? It bothers Dario, too. Pascal, I've been telling you time and time You've again. You've been lying to me time and time again. Dario's a young man. He's good looking. Why would any woman prefer me? Dario's an acrobat. He does the wire rack. He wants to take my place. Everybody who sees Jenny wants to take my place. Where are you going? Jumbo is likely to be lonely. I think I'll keep him company for a while. kind of edgy tonight. Well, here it is, Mr. Wishbone. I'm afraid I'm not a very good cook. Uh -huh. I'm not going to take your word for that, ma'am. <laughs> I'll have a little bit for you. Jenny, where's Pascal? Oh, I'm sorry. He's in the wagon. I'll get him. Help yourself, Dario. I will, Jenny. I'm not in there drinking. I didn't think you were. No, you don't lie very well. I've been watching you. There's food on the table. Watching you and Dario. Pascal, come and eat. I'm curious, Jenny. You and Dario talk about me when you're together? Or don't you even think about me at all? What are you trying to do, Pascal? Drive me away from you? I want you to be old and ugly like me. You're making me feel old and ugly. Dario makes you feel different, doesn't he? Doesn't he?
Guess it's time to turn in. Oh, don't go yet, Mr. Wishbone. Pascal has hardly had a chance to talk to you. Pascal. What? Are you married? No. You've been married? Well, close to it a couple of times. Once in St. Louis. You've been a scout a long time. Well, I'm not exactly a scout. I can take you to Braley, but... What are you, then? Well, I'm kind of a doctor, too. I am impressed. Only on a drive, there's not much doctoring to do most of the time. Well, what do you do most of the time? I'm a cook. <laughs> I like you, Mr. Wishbone. You do? I do. Like most of the other real human beings I've ever known. Pretend once, pretend twice that you're something else. The third time, tell the truth. You're a cook. There's nothing wrong with being a cook. Wrong? I just wish I did something half as useful. Well, making people laugh's useful too, especially out here. People laugh one minute, cry the next. Or kill. You make a man laugh, he'll forget you the minute you're out of his sight. You make a man hate you, he'll remember you the rest of his life. It's all the same to you. I'd just soon he'd forget me. <laughs> Are you a drinking man, Mr. Wishbone? I take it or leave it alone. Mostly on the drive, I leave it alone. Not on the drive now? Care to join me in a drink? Yeah, sure. Shorty! Pascal? Bring a bottle and some glasses. Mr. Wishbone here. Scout and doctor and gentleman. Finds himself just a trifle thirsty. As does Pascal. A bottle and some glasses. Three glasses. Jenny, please. I want to talk to you. What about? He slapped you before. I don't need to be reminded. You do. You need to be reminded that, that last week he knocked you down. You need to be reminded that a, a month ago when he was drunk, he, he almost strangled you. Just because you smiled at a boy that came round to the tents after the performance. I don't need to be reminded. I know all those things. You must know that one of these days he's going to kill you. He's jealous. He loves me. I know he loves me. I've seen so many things, Mr. Wishbone. Great cities of the East, great cities of Europe. It does seem a little strange to be sitting out here in the middle of a wilderness. Well, this is not so much wilderness. Well, the Chisholm Trail's getting to be pretty well known. I apologize, Mr. Wishbone. I imagine to a stranger the busiest spot in the world would seem like a wilderness. Jenny, raise a fuss about the bottle. No, uh, no, she didn't make a fuss at all. Mm. <laughs> Doesn't deserve a prize for that. He's not the only one that loves you. Dear, you Wait. You're afraid. Not of Pascal. You're afraid of me. Why should I be afraid of you? You're kind and good. Because I'm going to tell you that I love you. Because I'm going to say that I want to take you away from a don't. man that's, that's half insane. A man you don't love. He's my husband. Do you love him at all anymore? I can't leave him. Forget me. Forget that I love you. You've got to leave him because of yourself. Do you want to know the real reason I can't leave? What is it? Because I'd never be sure that I was leaving him to save myself. Or whether I was leaving him because I was falling in love with you. Jenny. No, Dario, please. Quit the circus. You know, if you were to shave off that beard, you'd look so much younger. Well, I'd be pretty lonesome, too. Oh, this beard's been with me for a long time. Besides, it keeps me warm when the norther blows. <laughs> it's so gray. It's got a right to be gray. It's grown on the face of a man that's lived a good many years. I envy you. I won't leave you alone with him. To make things easier. You could have found a better place, a more hidden one. Do you have to make love to my wife where I can see you? He's quitting the circus, Pascal. I'll kill him first. Oh. Oh. Pascal! 
Until you stop it. Stop it. What do you want to do? Kill him? Kill him. I told you, I do doctrine. Now let me take a look at her. Oh, now somebody take him away. I didn't mean her any harm. I didn't mean her any harm. Is she dead? No, she's no. just unconscious. Well, if no bones broken, she may be hurt inside. Can't tell here. First thing to do is make her comfortable. The bed in our wagon, it's soft. Well, we'll get her there as soon as possible. Now don't jostle around doing it. I'll get my bag. I'm getting out of here so as I can examine the patient. Pascal, come on out. Give Mr. Wishbone a chance. Or don't you want Jenny to get better? While I was getting them out of here, I saw your eyes flicker. That's better. Nothing's better. You hurt any place? No. Well, I guess just being thrown from the wagon knocked you out for a while. Oh, I should go and tell Pascal. Please, don't tell him. He's worried about you. He's worried about me now, but when he finds out I'm all right... He'll... Mr. Wishbone, you're going to have to pretend that there's something wrong with me. What good will that do? It'll give me a chance to escape. When we get to Braley and they're setting up the circus, I'll, I'll take a stage and, and go east. You think that's fair to your husband, ma'am? Pascal is a great clown. His father and his father before him, they were all great clowns. Look at him. Why do you think he has a four-wagon circus and a lion and a few monkeys and an elephant and nothing more? I don't know. Because he drove everyone away from the circus, everyone under 30. He was jealous of me. It started about three years ago when he became 50. And ever since then, Pascal's circus has grown smaller and smaller. And we drifted away from the big cities and the big crowds. Now we're here. I guess Texas isn't a very good place for a circus. At least I don't ever remember seeing one out here before. It would be different if he were just beginning. But he was at the very top. Oh, you should have known him then. The tent ringing with laughter. It's my fault. I never should have married him. So I thought if I left him, he might forget his jealousies. And go back and be the great clown he really is. You may not think so, Mr. Wishbone. But that's very important to me. Because I loved him very much once. I kind of hate letting him think you're sick when you're not. He might be saving my life. Pretty sick, ma'am. Uh, you just stay right where you are unless I tell you to move. You know that thing 
thing back there. You mean the elephant? Wouldn't be any good at all on a trail drive. Not any worse than the doctor who ain't a doctor. Who ain't a doctor? You. Well, never said it was. At least not a real one. Well, then, how come you knew so much about Jenny's sickness? I had a lot of experience with fellas being thrown. Well, uh, you ain't had much experience at lying. You getting at something? You know, I don't think Jenny's sick at all. You talk this old rule to anyone else? I like Jenny. Oh, that's something. Comes to that, I even like you. Oh, thanks. You know, Pascal's gonna find out about this sooner or later. If I were you, I'd get back to that cattle drive right now. My orders are to take this circus to Braley, and I'm gonna take it to Braley. You know, you don't act as smart as a man should act with whiskers as gray as yours. Well, it's getting about time for lunch. Uh, tell me, you already found out all you're gonna find out from me. not feeling good. However she's feeling it. It's my fault. I got to talk to her. Well, I can't keep you out of there. I never really thought... I mean, it was all in my mind. I know it was. Jenny. You remember Boston? When we got married. Yes, I remember. Haven't you got anything to say to Pascal? I'm tired, Pascal. Why does a man want to die because of a woman? She's fine. She'll be much better off in that hotel room with quieter and less drafts. First time in ten years that separated. Oh, well, it's only a half a mile. Sometimes half a mile is as far away as the other side of the world.
Come over here, all of you. Something I want to tell you. We are in Braley, Texas. A dusty town and empty country. There isn't much anyone can say about Braley, Texas, up until now. After today, it'll have a certain distinction. This is the place where Pascal gave his last performance. You're joking. My wife is very ill. She needs all the attention I can give her. I can't keep both the circus and her. I choose Jenny. Shorty? For what it's worth, the elephant, the monkey, the lion, the wagons. It's your show. Well, what are you... What are you going to do? Jenny and I will find some place. Don't worry. You'll never hear from us again. There never was a Pascal could quit a circus. There never was. There will be now. I don't believe him. He means what he says. Why would he want to give the circus up? Jenny. The only reason Jenny hasn't been killed is because of us. You, uh, Orlando, me. How many times have we saved her from him? I know that. But there's nothing to worry about. Is there, Mr. Wishbone? What do you mean? Jenny was faking. You took her away from the circus and put her up in that hotel. Why? Give her a chance to get a stagecoach east. That's what I meant. The thing is, it isn't going to be that easy. Why not? There's no stagecoach out of Braley for three days. I just don't like it. I don't see you got much choice, ma'am. I can't believe he'd give up the circus. Can you believe he'd try to kill you again? Yes. Then you've got to get out of here. I'd try to take you to Brownsville myself, but it's been three days. I've got to get back to the herd. I'd rather go alone. Now, you remember what happened the last time you drove a wagon. No, you let Dario take you. And when you get to Brownsville, you can take a stagecoach alone. That'll make you feel better. It'll make me feel more honest. What about my clothes? They're all in the wagon. I'll get them. Just tell me what you want. Oh, well, they're in a suitcase behind a red chair. I packed it yesterday. I'll be right back. Mr. Wishbone, one more thing. There, there's a picture album on a shelf over the bed. Would you get that too, please? I'll get it. Pascal. She needs to change clothes. She's too sick to think about clothes, isn't she? Or maybe she isn't. Well, you don't know anything about women. Well, no matter how sick they are, I, know, I, I need to know about Jenny. About she packed that before she left, didn't she? And you're taking it to her. Where's she going? Well, she's staying right there in that hotel room. Uh oh? Now, she's a sick woman. I'm not going to let you bust in there. <laughs>
I'm a clown. But only when I'm working. Only in front of an audience when I wear the grease paint and the big shoes. Nobody makes a clown out of me with my wife, with my life. I asked Stereo to take me away with him. You didn't have to ask him twice, did you? <laughs> Pascal. Go get my doctor's bag. It's in the front of my wagon. Stop and the bullet's out. There's no reason why you shouldn't get over this. I guess I'm supposed to thank you. That's up to you. You just stay right there in bed for three or four days and you'll be in no danger. <laughs> no danger. Hear that, Dario? No danger. Except that while I'm in bed, you and Jenny can run off together. And you'll be miles away. You'll be a lifetime away. I wish it was true. Jenny's at the circus waiting to go on. She's waiting for me so we can do the high wire act. Why? Why do the two of you run away together now while well, you've got the chance? Don't you realize, Pascal, she'll never leave you? She loves me. No, you killed that. In spite of what I told her, she still won't. What do you think you're doing? I'm getting up. You heard Dario. Jenny's not leaving me. But if you don't stay right in that bed, you're gonna kill yourself. Mr. Wishbone, I am Pascal, the clown. Wherever there's a circus, there's always a clown. May I call your attention to the southeast corner of the arena, performing 25 feet in the air on the slenderest of cables without a net, Dario and Jeanette. shouldn't be out there. Well, I didn't try to stop him. 
your circus. Tell them. Entertain the people. Do your tumbling act. Sorry, you shouldn't have gone. Don't worry, Jenny. I won't do it again. Sorry, I knocked you around. One thing a good performer knows is when to make an exit. The sound of laughter and applause was in his ears when he died. <laughs> what more could a cloud want? Irma! Uma! Uh, 